Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Halfway. Six rounds are going to be scored complete at the end of today's racing. Today, one of the longest races on the calendar. We open up an extra 50 kilometers and to really put the challenge together, we've decided, you know what? Let's head to the Windy City. Let's head to Chicago, Illinois and race on the city street. It's a track which has many different pitfalls and challenges that surround it. It is one of the most unique proof of concept circuits out there in the world. And it's being driven today in your DSL Welding Services V8 Super Cup for season number three. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone watching around the world. My name is Jake Sperry. Jason Fewens alongside me for today's action. Jake Kennedy on the cameras as per usual. But the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois. If you are Chicago born and bred, you have that sense of pride around this city for what it can do and what it has been as a sense of an icon. But here on the fantastic lakeside scenario and setting that we've got, this is gonna be a circuit, Jason, which pretty much has a uniqueness surrounding it. Yeah, thanks, Ferry. Good evening, everybody. It's uh, traditionally a street circuit at its finest. Plenty of 90-degree turns, lots of hard braking, very, very narrow track, and very, very heavy consequences for an error. So tonight we are here for an extended period of time, and I think it's 58 laps this evening, and it is going to be a long haul for these drivers. You can imagine it's going to be hot around the city with all this concrete, and uh, I'm sure a lot of these drivers will be feeling the heat tonight as well and feel the wind as well in the windy city of course it does whip up around here watch out for the overtaking opportunities today then turn one turn four turn six and if you're brave turn seven and turn 12 are also chances to make things happen a lot of 90 degree corners here and they're very reminiscent of what a street circuit uh, is all about you often talk about the 90 degree turn at street circuit and everyone seems to shy away from it i quite like the challenge but it should be interesting especially the runs through eight to about turn 10. That section of track is going to be a real challenging one as they run on up through that section of road and run this three and a half kilometer, 2.2 mile clockwise circuit around 58 times today over the course of action. This is how the championship looks though as we run into today's runnings as Andrew Dyson thought he was going to extend that championship lead out further. In fact, it did ever so slightly shrink back on him. Sebastian Vandel was able to minimally gain, but that was crucial in terms of what he was wanting. 175 points to 141. Blake Warboys with his victory last time out at Phillip Island moves up to third in the championship. And what a series we have right now. When you consider you've got Warboys, Delaney, Mulford, Whiting, Freeman, and Michael Taliancic. Second through eight, split by just 10 points. Teo Sorono and Dylan O'Shea, ninth and 10th overall in the championship. So, uh, O'Shea, sorry, with the two wins early on in the season. Jason, you know, we've been keeping an eye on how that championship has looked. And as we also know, it is staying very, very close and it should stay close all season when it comes to your sports category. Two categories here today. Yeah, both in the AM and the sports category last week at Phillip Island really did manage to mix things up again. There was a big bag of results that sort of shook things up 
which is exactly what we want to see here tonight in this DL Welding Services Championship. So the sports championship, you can see on your screen at the moment, Christopher Tomlin out the front at the moment, leading by nine points. It's not a big margin, Luke Crum and uh, Will Yesberg just waiting for an opportunity there to take control. Ty Delaney sitting fourth with Jack Anderson, sitting comfortably in fifth with uh, John Fillingham, put in a really good result last week and uh, earned himself some more points to find himself just one point behind Jack Anderson. Martin Hanlon, Kobe Jordan there as well, Matt Shanahan and Shane Newens there running out the top 10. So still plenty to play for. And again, the uh, top, what is it, second through to fourth, just separated by a few mere points. What I will say as we take a little look then at our race info on your bottom left hand side of your screen, 60 minutes worth of practice they've already conducted and they've already conducted two thirds of the 30 minutes of qualifying that is available to them. And today, 58 laps worth of racing. And it's more important, I would say, the three tyre sets that are out there here, Jason, for them to use over the course of the race. They have 66.6 litres they can put in their fuel tank, but only having the three sets of tyres, it's a two-stop race today. So a number of safety cars you can't necessarily, uh, how would you put it, be uh, frivolous with the tyres. No, absolutely. Like I said, very heavy braking here. Pretty much most of the corners are heavy 90 degree braking. They are heavy cars and it is a very bump and undulating circuit. So bumpy and undulating. So uh, very prone to using tyres, few brake lockups and some heat into those tyres and the three sets could quickly get chewed through. So really management, keeping it off the walls and keeping the temperature in the tyres underneath the car is going to be critical to a good result tonight. One thing I will note is that I do believe there is no Christ Christopher Tomlin here today out here racing. So that's going to put a nice free kick here, Jason, to everybody in the sports category. They have a chance to take the championship lead coming out here of the Windy City of Chicago, Illinois, and make that very long trek next week up to Norway at Rudskogen. Yeah, it's going to be a, a complete change of... Uh, circumstances from where they are tonight and again the, the car is going to be very well suited for that track not a lot of room but uh, very well suited to the change of direction so next week's going to be a pretty exciting one to come back and tune in to watch but of course tonight we've got to get through the 58 laps here and it is a co concrete jungle this is a concrete jungle we'll go on board with jack mickelson then who will be looking to try and find a lap that improves on 10th position. Find your breaking point here into turn one. It's a very open exit out of the corner. Flick over to the left-hand side of the road and then really ratchet through at turn two. Try and get as close to the wall as you can. You can't touch it, though. A zero X instant point invalidates the lap. Now you've got a sweeping section through turn three and it's double apex here through turns four and five. The main braking zone is turn four. You've got to be careful of that wall on the outside. It juts out of you there as you go through. And then in through turn five, you're nicely having to use all the road again. And this is where you meet turn one of the course back though at turn six. Find your braking marker. Use the Geico sponsorship as a little bit of help here and a car that loves oversteer and understeer at the same time. Moving through turn six, up and over the bridge then. And the railway that goes along turn seven. Don't go for the first turn. It's the second turn. You've got to go past that section, that small pillar in the middle. And then turn eight. So difficult. You have to be committed. One line, two all. Round the Hilton Hotel at turn nine. And then again, once more, choose the second line at turn ten getting back on the brakes through the short shoot at turn number 11 does hit the wall so that lap will be invalidated from Jack Mickelson but then you've got the final corner here turn number 12 another 90 degree right hander and you have to make sure that you've guarded that on the final lap because that is what the Chicago street circuit is all about 123.4 the current fastest time by that driver there we saw number 41 Andrew Dyson for a moment but here's his main challenger same one as last time out really here jason those top two came together rick kuznetsov in a 95 sin sport car he wants to give andrew dyson a bit of repentance for what happened last week yeah there was some lap uh, last lap incident that, that occurred and of course uh, rick and andrew both came off second best so they'll be looking to redeem themselves tonight and uh, obviously have a clean race put that behind them but uh, it's certainly the elbows were out last week. Rick was really, really hungry for that win. He threw everything he had at it, but it just wasn't enough to come through with the goods. So that call you just did, a very, very busy minute 23. There's not a lot of time for the drivers to stop and take a breath and have a look at the scenery around them. 
It's uh, from the moment these lights go green, it is going to be focus on, they have their eyes locked in and they will be concentrating right to the drop of the checkered flag. And that is an improvement from Rick Kuznetsov there, at 23.474, but he's still short by about eight, uh, 16 thousandths of a second. So needs to find the smallest margin to go on top. And I don't think drivers are going to be taking too many laps around at exactly the same time here, Jason. I took a look at the track conditions here out on circuit. It's fluctuating and mostly cloudy, but it's going anywhere between 33 and 37 degrees centigrade right now, which means that the track is pretty much in a state of warmness at this point in time. Not necessarily ideal. No, no, they are heavy cars to pull up, and the temperature on these V8s really that is critical to putting in a good lap time. So. Most of these drivers will be out there waiting for a little bit of cloud cover to come over. And uh, once it does, there'll be the green light for them to really put, put their focus on and set that qualifying lap. There's only four and a half minutes for them to do that. So time is quickly running out, but uh, there is still an opportunity out there if a little bit of luck falls their way. Yeah, the improvements for Thomas Freeman goes fifth fastest. Thomas Hens in the Henry James Racing uh, machine goes seventh fastest on a 24 0.488 so on a, just his second start of the season he's starting to well third start of the season he's looking pretty good Andy Barber the Sky Point racing car looking to try and get some progress going Sky Point at the Windy City well, he'll be looking to try and get himself a lot of work now what we do know as well is that this is a street circuit the margins are a little bit finer than they are anywhere else Jason so it's very easy to find yourself making a little bit of contact with the barriers and you just have to be pinpoint accurate so how difficult is it going to be for these drivers today knowing that they've got to do the exact same maneuvers and the exact same accuracy pointing over the course of the laps that they have 58 straight times without error well, it's not an easy task to do, but as you said earlier, they've done an hour's practice before the lights go green. They've done half an hour of qualifying, so they will well and truly have their eyes switched in and their focus on. It's just a matter of really being able to read the traffic around you, because that's what's going to be really critical tonight. And Andy Barber just proving how difficult it can be to turn seven uh, out on track. And turn seven's a really unique one as we go with Michael Taliancic gearing up on an outlap here. Turn seven, as you go through, you're going up and over the bridge, but it's a downhill braking zone on what is a relatively flat track. So the moment you start thinking, okay, you've got this all sorted, suddenly you've got to bring your braking marker naturally back a good 10, 15 meters just because you've got gravity working against you. Yeah, as well as the fact that the, the tracks are quite uneven, so you can hit the bump just the wrong way. It's just enough to unsettle the car and it doesn't take much to put you offline and you found yourself a concrete wall on the outside. A nice fountain though, right in the middle here of Chicago. And everybody now will be looking at this going, God, wouldn't I like to just celebrate in there once I've got my victory done. Here we look at the 04. This is Matt Stewart, 1-9, looking to try and get things going in the 04 machine. 16th fastest at the moment, flicking through the final corner. And everyone's trying to get the power on as early as they can. Rick Kuznetsov following just behind hoping to improve on the 23-4 and he's going to be short then as he pulls it over he might have enough time for one more lap he'll have to get out to the pits incredibly quickly off of the toe to get himself going for that one Aiden Ford platinum racing over the line that's a 24.3 from Aiden Ford and a big improvement from him puts him up to P6 that's a big lap from him yeah, Aiden was sitting down a little bit further back than we probably would have expected, but as, as the uh, minutes count down, he's pulled one out of the bag, put himself in a pretty comfortable position. So at the moment he's sitting in P3, the last thing you want to do is find yourself buried deep in the field here at this circuit because you can very easily get caught up in somebody else's mistake. It is hard to pass, and you are going to have to be quite aggressive if you uh, really want to make these moves stick. Oh, you absolutely do. No doubts about that. It's a very, very important race they've got going through as they race around the Buckingham Fountain Grant Park here the circuit Andrew Dyson now trying to give himself a buffer still only has 16 thousandths of a second he's got almost four tenths of a second over Blake Warboys the clock ticks down it'll be interesting to note who is the last driver available to set a time because Netsov's trying to find a little bit of space out on the circuit 
Dyson up over the bridge here at turn seven. Coleman, David Coleman goes fifth fastest, then improves as he jumps up then with a 24.057. Flicking through the left, Barndale fourth fastest at the moment as well. It's interesting as Andrew Dyson now looking to just thread the needle here. Get as close as you can to the Goodyear and Geico sponsorship through towards turn 11 and up over the hill. Checker flag is about to fly and he will be one of the first over the line. Brown is there as I believe Kuznetsov died for the pits. Here comes Dyson, does he improve further? Oh, he's so close. I think he's found a couple thousandths of a second to say he could go a little bit quicker. Tali Ancic out there on a lap at the moment. He could be someone who improves from 10th position. Driving one-handed and he'll move over to the side so his lap won't improve. Maybe Brandon Grosch as well. He's done well in qualifying so far in the juiced car. He's in 12th position. He'd like a little bit more if he possibly could over the line. Three tenths of a second is what he's searching for and over the stripe he goes and that one won't count because he's knocked the wall somewhere out over the track. Ty Delaney and Thomas Hins are together on the road. They're running through the final corner right now. And can Delaney jump up then in the 07? 27 flat, does find time, but no improvement on position. And for Thomas Hins, he couldn't find an improvement either. Blake Warboys stuck in third position, at least as Matt Stewart comes over the line and will stay in position then for a moment and that should be just about everybody over the line and setting their times representatively so let's take a little look then at the starting grid then for procedure today and this 200 kilometer race on the streets of chicago as we race around grant park andrew dyson as he has done so many times this season has put the car up on pole position in your super sport category he finds himself then with the pros 123.457 clear by 18 thousandths of a second over rick kuznetsov who will be his main challenger here today blake warboys will start in third with sebastian vandell in fourth position david coleman having a great qualifying effort today he starts fifth with thomas freeman in sixth position some tracks do suit uh, certain drivers and street circuits certainly like that because Zayden Ford who's in seventh place with Thomas Hins in eighth Jack Mickelson and Michael Taliancic on the fifth row of the grid Tim Mulford will have Brandon Grosch for company then 11th and 12th with Jamie Dyke starting 13th and Andy Barber in 14th position Jai Schultz and Matt Stewart will house row eight with row nine consisting of Seth Brown and Tom Pritchard on the 25 Point six seven eight five six seven eight. Nice little straight there that's been going on through. Row 10, 19th and 20th then will house Colin Finland and Teo Sorono with Aiden Schultz, the first of your sport category drivers in 21st position. We'll have Troy Mortensen and Jack Anderson along around with Luke Crumb in 24th position. Ty Delaney, Martin Hallinan and Shane Newans are making up the 27 car grid here today which they have two minutes to grid up here or they start from a place known as pit lane this is going to be a really important run here along the south columbus drive as they will look towards east balbo drive turn number one out on this circuit over the fences the buckingham fountain which they'll be keeping an eye out on. But it's a 58-lap race. We're expecting it to be a two-stop race here today as they look to make everything they possibly can happen today in this field battle that they've got going on. This is a really, really important halfway stay, and it's street circuits that will make sure that championships can be won and can be lost because you can blink and suddenly you don't have a race anymore. We do have live safety cars as well in this series. So this is going to be one to definitely keep out in mind. We're just waiting for Blake Warboys to jump up onto the grid. 20 seconds for him in the number 63 car. And he will jump up onto the grid. And so we will wait for him. And Tom Pritchard will be one to look for. And Teo Sorono might decide to start for the pits. He jumps on the grid at the 11th hour. So let's get ourselves ready then here from Chicago. The Windy City will have itself in full view. 3.44 kilometers, 12 turns, 58 laps worth of racing. It starts now and we're underway. Andrew Dyson getting an absolute flyer off the line. Blake Warboys does well and also he'll look to go to the outside to short run here 
to turn number one as everybody looks to funnel on through on this opening lap. Everybody giving each other a lot of space then through the opening section. They don't want to be the one that causes the incident early. And as they run through, it is single file through your first eight to ten drivers here, Jason, as they fly on towards turns three, four and five. It looks like everybody got a relatively clean start. Looked like they might have been a juice car a bit slow away as the lights went green. But I think everybody behind them managed to avoid as we make our way around through turns four and five. Now everybody's still in single file. Raw Boys and Knetsoff really battling into turn number one there. But they sorted themselves out really quick. The last thing they want to do is give Andrew Dyson a bit of a sniff and allow him to pull a gap away. Exactly. You can't let Andrew Dyson run away because he never comes back. That's traditionally how the racing goes. But at least for the early stages, patience needed. Look at how the front right tyre flips up over as we take a fantastic look then through this beautiful section of roads, uh, of uh, track, right before the Congress Plaza Hotel and Convention Centre as they now fly through towards South Michigan Avenue and then to East Jackson Drive which is around here, turn 11, and then into turn 12, back onto the main straight once again. One lap already in the books, already one second to Andrew Dyson. He's already pressing an advantage early, and he wants to strike while the iron's hot. You've got to be a little bit cautious here and there. Just saw in the background, Aiden Ford getting very close to the walls. There's number five, Andy Barber. He's looking like he's going to have to be defensive here, because that's Brandon Grosh who's tried to figure out if he can go through. Grosch has had a terrible start to this race. He's dropped five places on the opening lap. Yeah, that might have been the one we saw just struggling to get off the line. They are a tricky car, and it is a bit of an art form to get these things moving from the get-go. But uh, Grosch has got plenty of laps. There is another 56 and a half laps remaining before the drop of the chequered flag. So it's... Aiden Schultz is in trouble, and he's in trouble at turn four. And that might constitute a safety car here. And uh, that's a big, big issue for the LCR Esports car because that's right on the racing line. So that should be a safety car. And we shall bring things to a halt very, very much. There on the run through Roosevelt Corner, turn number four. That's how quickly it can go wrong out on track. And you talk about places where you've got no room, you pretty much have to guess whether you're good or you're not good at that section of track, Jason. If you get it wrong, you've got to flick it left. Otherwise, you're just going to careen straight into the barrier. Yes, yeah, Barry, as you can see there, the car looked like it was relatively buried into those tyres. And uh, again, we see Andrew Dyson. He had a 1.5 second lead after two and a bit laps, and that's been demolished because of this uh, yellow safety car. So it's well, well and good to get yourself a bit of a lead and take a little bit of initial pressure off but you've also got to save those tyres we are very very early on in the race and i think it's too early to see these drivers dive in and change tyres at this point oh. as we just have a look to see how the carnage unfolded and uh, it looked like the car that orange car just in front was very very lucky it might have been david coleman just to, enough to avoid the back of that uh, car stranded in the tyres so it could have very easily have been a little bit of trouble there and uh, could have been a lot larger uh, than before. Schultz was running near the back, so that might have actually have been someone maybe like Colin Finland, Martin Hallinan maybe could have got caught up in that, but it was a very, very close moment out there on circuit. We did see Jai Schultz jump into the pits here on lap three. Now, that's not necessarily a bad decision when you consider long and the short as they uh, uh, sit behind the DSL safety car. Uh, out there at the moment on circuit but one of the things we're talking about is that you need roughly about 11 or 12 laps to try and really conduct a pit stop that's what you're going to need after the two stops that we expect today's racing to be the one thing that's going to counter that is if we have a lot of cautions today around this place where Jai Schultz making that pit stop now could gain track position later on in the race if a number of cautions come into play and he's saving more fuel than everyone else. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a gamble, but uh, at, with a high-risk circuit like this, the chances of more safety cars before the end of the 58 laps is almost guaranteed. So it's uh, fuel conservation, even at this early stage, is going to be critical because every bit of fuel you can save now is going to shorten your pit stop come, uh, come the time where everybody dives into the pits. And if that particularly happens under green, you can either make or break and you can actually lose quite a few positions. We 
certainly can lose quite a few positions if you're not careful. And uh, as the safety car will flick right into the pits, the pace will be in control of number 41, Andrew Dyson. This is a crucial restart then. We'll be back to green flag running here. Lap four of 58. He needs a run on Rick Kuznetsov. He got the jump on him on the opening lap. He tries to put the boot down off the exit. Kuznetsov has a really good launch in comparison to him. And I think Blake Warboys also did as well. The main protagonist from last time out at Phillip Island. They're back at the front again. Varndell in fourth position. David Coleman in fifth. They're all going to want to get in on the act then as we restart this race here from the Chicago Street. Right now racing around Grant Park as they now run all the way once again to that Roosevelt corner. Turn four, which will be coming up the fast flick right in turn three. And into turn four, such a committed corner here. Four and five. Yeah, plenty of speed being shown and it is a braking zone, but it's not one of the heavier ones on the circuit because the, the right-hander does tend to flow pretty well. But down this back straight into this left-hander here, this is probably the real heavy braking zone. It's really critical you get this run right because you can clip the inside wall and that quickly spits you across to the outside before you make it across the bridge. So down the hill again, another tricky braking zone in here really narrows up on the exit of the corner and you can go out and uh, kiss that wall and again, find yourself in all sorts of drama. I saw clipping the inside of turn six, Sebastian Vandal, which is a very rare thing to see. David Coleman in the fishy motorsport car is all over him. Wants to try and move up then into that fourth place. And he's someone who's got the bit between his teeth because he might have just found a circuit here, Jason, that really suits his driving style. And he is very good through these 90 degree corners, especially on a very bumpy surface like it is here on the streets of Chicago. Yeah, he's looking quick and he's looking confident. And I'm sure he's definitely got the attention of Vandell in front of him. It looks like he's pulled a little bit of a gap to Freeman behind. It's just over 1.1 seconds. So not close enough for Freeman to actually have a, a decent look under brakes, but he's definitely close enough to the car in front that he's, uh, he's got the attention of Vandell in, in the uh, P4 at the moment. So he's got the attention. Now flick through Roosevelt Corner once again. Now go through turns four and five out on track and then that run back along the straight towards turn number six. They'll pass some tennis courts on the left-hand side and then on the brakes they'll go into this turn six corner and every time you go through here you're thinking about your exit. How are you going to get things up and over the hill? Let's take a little look at the racing replay here. Uh, this virtual racing school replay right now. This is number four of Varndale. You can see there, bang! just clips the inside and that's all it takes here uh, Jason to get yourself in trouble yeah that was as that was as close as you want it to be but uh, David Coleman doing a pretty good job there not to get sucked in and following through and do the same thing so the drivers out there they're running their own race but they're also being very aware of the uh, what the cars in front and behind are doing yeah they absolutely are and it is starting to heat up just a bit further behind Aidan Ford's got his hands full let's take another little look then here at this replay this is a bit further down so this is right in front of dry shots this is 73 oh getting it horribly wrong into the wall there that's shane nowens who finds himself then just overcooking it slightly you can see the heavy damage to the front right not doing any help tim mulford having a look in the phoenix racing team car then trying to find that move through on the inside but suddenly finds himself defending because brandon gross is trying to make up those places that he lost on the opening start of this race he can't quite find an angle into turn number four he's gonna have to be patient and very nearly ran wide there well we'll have a look uh, here jason exactly why they were side by side and turn one i think is your big culprit oh and into the wall he goes mulford so he drops three places but ultimately holds on to it. And you can see those rear brake discs glowing to every single place. This is going to be a very heavy track on the brakes. Yeah, you can see the damage on the right-hand side of the back of Tim's car. Not cosmetic to, enough to uh, have any real ramifications. It's car number 98, they're doing his best to get out of the Same way. Uh, that's damage and it's heavy damage. Where has he clipped out on circuit? It might have been at turn seven where it's gone wrong for him and uh, if there's anywhere it goes wrong it's the last place you want it to happen and it just takes one wall around this track 
uh, for the race to go wrong. In fact, I think it's happened before that. It's actually happened at turn four. It's gone wrong. He's hit the wall at four. But top two now are away from Blake Warboys. And suddenly, Rick Kuznetsov is saying, you know what? We're racing. Let's concentrate. Turn four. This is where it goes wrong for Aiden Ford. You can see he's just a little turning. And that's all it takes. Yeah, it doesn't look like a lot of cosmetic damage, but he will definitely be trying to, or has made his way back to the pits now with a quite significant left hand down damage on his steering wheel. So he'll get a, uh, a repair done and he'll get back out there as soon as he potentially can, but it's cost him a lot of track time at the moment. Probably pretty critical if he tries to stay on the lead lap. Well, he won't have anything to help him get back out on the lead lap. There are no fast repairs in this series. So if you're going to get yourself back out on track, you're gonna to have to have that damage repaired in the pits until it's at a suitable level for you to go back going that black and orange mechanical flag is crucial as we take a look then over at the race for fourth fifth and sixth positions right now it is seb varndell who's looking behind him david coleman keeping him honest and thomas freeman just being a little bit of additional support there for david coleman not wanting to put himself in a position where he's risking this race right now in the early goings just going to keep himself calm. Jack Anderson, by the way, has just made a stop. He's just come out behind this group. So he's a lap down, making the stop on lap seven, which is very early for a pit stop. Yeah, it's earlier than you'd expect, but uh, maybe there's some, he's got some, himself some damage there as well that he's pretty keen to get repaired. Just hear a little bit of noise in the background. It looks like someone else is kissing the wall. So there's going to be plenty of paint on the exit of these walls before the end of the 58 laps is up tonight. We are jumping on board with Vandell, looking back at Coleman. So Coleman still applying a plenty of pressure. He's getting lots of fumes from the back of this Vandell vehicle at the moment. Just not close enough to get a move done, but he's certainly got the pressure applied and turned the heat up. Well, look at this. that final corner that's crucial and there's the 319 uh, down into the pits so that's Jack Anderson uh, once again back into the pits so clearly damage uh, they're not really being helpful is gonna have to come back in for a second time but here's Thomas Hins he's got eyes here trying to make a move he's got Michael Taliantz in the sights he might want to try and get by Holden versus Mustang yeah, I'd be pretty keen to see some in-car action to see how Talianchi is actually handling this. It's, he's actually got one arm uh, out of action at the moment, so he will have his work cut out for him. It's going to be a long 58 laps around here. It's a long 58 laps for anybody, but if you're driving with one arm, it's really, really going to be a, uh, a heck of an effort. So he's doing a really good job at the moment. He's sitting in P7. He's doing a stellar job of keeping Thomas Hins behind him at the moment. But... Uh, Pins applying a pressure and just waiting for a potential mistake. But Taliancic has proved himself to be a warrior in these cars and it takes a lot for him to make an error. Well, it kind of reminds me of Taliancic, the way Craig Lowndes was driving once upon a time with all the bandages wrapped up around him, making sure that he was okay. Yeah, I'm sure he's got his hands full or hand full uh, inside that Commodore at the moment, but uh, one eye in front and one eye in the mirror because Hinsey is close enough to potentially throw it down the inside if he wanted to take that risk, but the risk versus reward around this circuit is very, very small. So I'm sure hinsey has been around long enough. He knows what he's got to do to uh, be there at the, for the long game. I'm sure he knows, but he knows that Michael Taliancic and triple seven car in seventh place might want to get a little bit of a hurry up going. It's starting to get interesting behind Jamie Dyke, tenth position on back. He got. Stewart, Sorono, Mulford, Roche, all there. Andy Barber and Seth Brown trying to hold on. And this is a nice little pack then of threes and twos, which could be effectively a six very soon if uh, it starts getting a bit chipper at this point in time. Lap 10 here of 58. And for Jamie Dyke, he'll be looking behind and going, well, I quite would like a little bit of time, 
a little bit of gap that would be useful for me but as Michael Talijancic now finds himself going through look at how the car squirrels goes down through and it's so difficult through turn eight that might be the most difficult corner on the circuit turn eight that right hand because the front right kicks up off out of the air so you've got effectively three wheels to try and turn the car through as now here's a little look at what happened then this is the 30 to 27 and number 30 turns on in and just gets out of the way yeah i think you might find he's a lap down um after some contact earlier on in the race but the oh, no, uh, was that was from position that was just luke crumb letting the position go on dry schultz and there's the 640 car letting the position go on number one so uh, just as we see that then, that's a mistake into the wall at turn one then for David Coleman. He overshot it. Yeah, he's well and truly jumped off the back of Van Dill. Now he's just on two and a half seconds off from uh, where he was further a lap, one lap ago. So we have a quick look at the VRS Virtual Racing School replay here. It is going to explain exactly what has happened. Just got a little bit hot in there. The back steps out and it is a hard contact into that concrete wall. Well, hopefully for car number 640 able to keep that going there is no mechanical flag there so the damage is uh, at least on the uh, car not enough to hit the suspension so got away with that but they're certainly going to be doing a little bit of a nightmare to everything going through Thomas Hins knows how difficult it is to make a pass here and he's finding that he's very much stuck behind Michael Taliancic who at the best of times can make his uh, car very wide and it's proving so once again through turn 10 into turn number 11 and opening up that run then over on East Jackson Drive looking for South Columbus Drive here at the final corner and on to this next section this is a really crucial phase right now because some drivers will be sat in this position thinking well if I can't make a move there is one thing I can do to try and get an advantage another little search to the inside from Thomas Hins you can save fuel yeah, well, that might be a good uh, opportunity for Thomas at the moment just to get a few of his fuel numbers down and then wait for that first opportunity for a, a pit window to open so then he can dive into the pits. And he looks like he's having some trouble to getting around him on track. So the pass just might happen via a pit stop. So we'll have to keep an eye on, eye on that as the race unfolds. Just jumping off the back of Taliancic now by a couple of hundredths of a second. He's not quite as close as he was a little bit earlier. But it's all swings and roundabouts. Everybody's comfortable at different points of the track around here. Well, this is Seth Brown. And, oh, loses it on entry. Oh, it's not often that you see that. You just completely lock up the rear axle and the back kicking round and was able to keep it out of the walls and get that one going. But it has cost a little bit of time. So that would have been a very, very scary moment out on circuit. But... Now here's what's happened to Jamie Dyke, who was right up there in 10th position, remember? So now going through in towards turn four, it's been the trouble corner all day. Oh, that is a massive, massive hit. That will cost him his race there for the fishing motorsport driver. Yeah, you can see the instant uh, engine blown. That was a hard hit, and it was almost to a uh, quite an angled part of the corner as well. So he will have his race done and dusted on lap 13 or 58. I think he will be very, even if he wanted to, I think he'd be struggling to find his way back out on the circuit tonight. Well, crucially, he brings it back to the pits and uh, thank goodness that there isn't any oil drop in iRacing right now because that would have meant that the entirety of the field would have been on notice here around this Chicago street circuit. Thomas Hins, the race right now for eight to ninth position is there. We'll take a little look then from uh, the view behind. This is what you see going through. You're trying to find the right angle. Oh, such a heavy hit. You have to commit immediately to make the move around the outside. The 1-9 car moves around and then took that place away and did so fantastically. And trouble, number 85 going slow. That's Tim Mulford who finds himself now in the wrong row. Yeah, Tim was well and truly in that little battle pack from 10 through to 16. So we haven't quite seen exactly what happened there, but he's put himself on a bit of a precarious spot again. of the track. Yeah. So turn, turn fours so look like a few. So this is what's happened then. Tim Mulford, number 85, on his own, getting himself caught. So going through the left, and again, too much speed. The tyres, as they lose more and more grip, you're going to get more and more understeer. 
through turn four. You're not going to be able to get it slowed down. This will bring everybody into the pit. And crucially, well, not everybody right now. So Blake Warboys was the first to come in. Andrew Dyson and Rick Kuznetsov, the top two, stayed out longer. So this is a big moment in terms of this. The safety car is still, of course, down there in the pit. But Blake Warboys, this is a crucial stop. And he gets that stop nicely done. And he'll need to try and get himself going forward. And those two drivers, Dyson's Kuznetsov, they're going to be in a position now where they're thinking about, well, when do we make our stop? And surely, right now, lap 14 would be a very nice time to make that stop. And they both know that they're having to push, even though they're under yellow flag conditions. They still have to keep up a level of pace they go through. They can't afford to be undercut here by their stops. So Dyson diving into the pitch, you can see him take a narrow line through the final corner. Knessoff is doing exactly the same thing. But that Mulford accident was an exact carbon copy of what we saw just literally moments before. So the tyres around the circuit were well and truly past a year's by date. And uh, we start to see a few of those little mistakes creep in. Oh, well, it have been halfway through a t uh, stint there. And it's just when the tyres starting to lose its luster and a lot of drivers because this circuit is so tight, Jason, because this circuit does have a tendency to bite a lot harder than a lot of other circuits out there in the world, as we focus on Blake Warboys right now, would you also argue then in terms of that sense that these drivers aren't going to be able to practice as much as it that goes through? Andrew Dyson leaving the end of the lane, and he will be out ahead of Warboys. So too will Rick Kuznetsov, but the field will stack itself back up again. Yeah, so uh, the fact that uh, we had Dyson and Knetsov out there and not actually dive into the pits when Warboys did hasn't actually hurt him too much. So we have lost nothing. We're back in the same running order as we were before. The safety car was called for the top three at least. Uh, a bit further back in the field, there might be a bit more of a shuffle as drivers take different fuel levels and uh, different amounts of repair. But definitely things under control at the moment with the safety car out on circuit. And the leader has now caught the safety car and is going to start filing them back into position ready for a restart. Yeah, so everyone's going to have to try and catch up to the back of the car and uh, get themselves in a position to go through. Worth noting out there right now that you've got Martin Hallinan uh, down in the pits looking to finish off service and uh, is doing well as uh, we are keeping an eye out here. This is what Rosh had. Uh, on the exit of the pits then so he made his stop and uh oops that's no good we'll have to 360 the car back around now because they are under yellow flag conditions what's crucial about that spin is that because he's technically uh spun it to the inside that doesn't necessarily count as an overtake under yellow flag conditions jason because the car wasn't racing up at natural racing speed so it would have been okay for those two cars who went by uh Grosch to make that pass. Yeah, cold tyres coming out of the pits, just catching him off guard. But of course, with the car stationary facing the wrong way, it's a pretty hard argument to make that uh, pass under yellow stick. So just have to bite the bullet. I think he only lost two or three positions, but he did actually a pretty good job of keeping it off the wall and then spinning it back around the right way. So to his credit, didn't panic. Just watched his relative, made sure there was nobody else coming around turn one because it is a blind corner. Chose, chose the right time to make that spin and he's back underway. So a little bit of heat in the tyres initially, but because we're under safety car, those temperature tyres should narrow or come back down and he should be back under race conditions real soon without any real damage. Well, what is crucial is that it's our second safety car of the race here on the streets of Chicago here, the Windy City and round six, the halfway stage of the championship. It is one of two races over the course of this season that are a little bit longer. And we can take this time, hopefully if we can surprise our uh, director here, Jay Kennedy, and say, let's have a look at the schedule and see where we have been and uh, where we are going over the course of this season. We've been told, give me a minute and we'll get that happening. But I, I tell you what, it's important to get that perspective now because this is the first race here, Jason, that's an extra 50 kilometers longer than the other sprint star races that we've had over the course of the season so far. Yeah, it's a big ask to do 58 laps around here and uh, the drivers are really going to have to have their concentration levels at their peak. So we've seen a couple of drivers come unstuck already. 
Um, so what started off as a 25 car field has probably narrowed down, and I think the 21 still circulating out on track. There's been a couple of uh, cars that have suffered fatal injuries, as we saw Tim Mulford there just parked on the outside of Turn 5, him being one of them. So it's uh, not ideal for these drivers to finish so early. They were probably banking on a good points haul here tonight, and it, but it really did mean a matter of uh, 58 circulations around this track and keeping it off the wall. A few drivers, though, have profiteered out of it here. Michael Talianchich is up four spots, up seven spots is Matt Stewart, and up ten is Teo Sorono. Uh, let's take, then, our look at exactly where we have been as Andrew Dyson finds himself a heavy amount of blinking. That would concern him quite a bit. Let's take a look at our schedule, though, where we'd be and uh, where we're going. It is on its way. But we are heading towards Rudskoggen, which is the race after this to start the second half of the season. We've had some great races at Phillip Island, races at Silverstone, at Snetterton, which have been incredible, Jason. But it's the second half of the season, which I think starts to bring it a little bit closer together and says, well, what more can you ask for? You've got the likes then, of course, of Chicago, where we are here today. Rudskoggen follows then with the 200 kilometers at Bathurst. Montreal and Belle Isle for two more street circuits. 200 at Winton. And then you finish it off with 150 at Cota West. Yeah, it looks like we're traveling from one side of the globe right round to the other. And there is a real mix of uh, disciplines in there from those street circuits you mentioned through to tight, twisty circuits like we see at Winton. And of course, the Cota West is uh, a circuit that is very well suited for these cars. Again, we're only using the shorter circuit there, but it always provides some really good racing. It always does, and I'm sure you'll be able to see it with us at Simsby TV each and every week, because this is the time and the place to see some great V8 action going for the DSL Welding V8 Super Cup. And it will be another lap then of uh, pacing because the 22 car of Brandon Grosh is in trouble as well. So they had to abort at uh, the start because it looked like he'd lost it under his own power through turn number eight. Put the power on and then just as he was going through towards turn nine, looks like he just went straight on and didn't turn left. And just like that, the car's broken. Almost seems like a mechanical what would be a mechanical failure because it was a very strange reaction the car took into that wall and some real heavy damage you can see him there on the circuit just trying to check his uh, steering and how far gone it has uh, affected the vehicle but just very very unnatural almost like he lost uh, lost vision and couldn't actually see where the circuit was well, it looks like he's just gone up to about first or second he went up to second gear put the power on and then by the time he's even looked at it and had a think about it, he hasn't even turned the wheel and uh, it, it just looks to me there for Brandon Grosh like he's had some sort of failure and that then for him is a real shame he's been struggling uh, off of the start and he's been fighting hard to get back in but it's another retirement and we haven't really talked either as well here Jason about that sports category of course, that second category of drivers here. It is Martin Hallen who's got control of that in 14th position. So keep an eye out on that 028 Twisted Key Racing uh, machine in the beautiful Cerulean Blue, because he will have Luke Crum of LCR just behind there trying to find a way through. And then you've got Shane Nouns as well, who's got the damage front right, who might still be trying to make something happen today. Yeah, very distinctive there, that 028 car, and of course the LCR car behind you would spot him in a uh, in a snowstorm. He's got the camouflage out there, but the bright yellow makes it very distinctive on track to spot. So I'm not sure whether Shane Newens has actually dived into the pits. He's doing a really good job at the moment, sitting in P16. So he's right amongst the sports category there at the moment. As you just see the safety car pulling away from the field as they make their way through turn seven, cracking shot here. One of the best shots of this circuit is you can just see how much the cars do move around as they flick through that right hand corner and load up the uh, the car before they start this sweeper left around and through the long, long, long left hander that is turn number eight. I'll tell you what, Blake Warboys wants to get started. He is all over the back of Rick Kuznetsov 
wanting to get through. Sebastian Varndale's been the quiet one in fourth position. Maybe doesn't have the same amount of pace, but is hoping for something very similar to what happened a week ago to the day. Andrew Dyson once again with control of the field. Lap 18 of 58. 41 laps remaining here at the Windy City. The Chicago Street Circuit he holds him up even longer this time. There's Andrew Dyson. He'll still get the jump that he's looking for, but Kuznetsov will stay with him as they go through. Top five, six, seven, eight, all piled into the opening corner and look for a little bit of respite then as they run through towards turn number two. Once again, flicking right as they now go through that 90 degree corner and over towards the danger corner at Roosevelt. Turn number four. This has been where all the troubles have happened so far, but Andrew Dyson has a little bit of a margin once again. Yeah, you can see everybody single file, so there is not a lot of room outside of the racing line there to make your way through this circuit. As they make their way, we'll jump on board with the car 155 at the moment. So this is Serono, like you said, up 10 spots from where he was earlier. He's tucked underneath, tucked underneath the rear wing of Stewart here in the front. Bit of a lock up up in front, but looks like everybody's made it through as they go over the railway bridge into this tight right hander. Oh, Hallinan, trouble for Hallinan, he's backwards. Now at turn six, so the leader of the sports category now goes around and Luke Crumb will take control of that in the number 30. Heavy damage to the rear, no spoiler left on it as you now hit the brakes into turn seven. What on earth has happened there? It looked like Crumb was trying to make the move up the inside here. We'll see if he get it slowed up on the brakes. He gets it in the corner, Allen slows it down and suddenly Nouns is in the back of him with nowhere to go. Yeah, you can see how quickly things unfold. Really, really good car position by Crumb to make that move. It is a heavy braking zone and lots of respect shown there between Hanlon and Crumb. And of course, just the uh, mid-corner speed just significantly lower than what it has been every other lap. Shane Ewans has come through and uh, caught him off guard. He's kissed the back of Hanlon there and all of a sudden he's facing the wrong way and he's got quite a bit of aero damage missing that back, back boot lid. Yeah, so it's going to be a tough, tough old uh, race to go on through there. Jack Mickelson now is the one looking in a bit of trouble. There's number 30 uh, then going through and uh, trying to get things going. We do have side by side though, Mickelson having to defend here from Stewart. Matt Stewart trying to go around the outside in the 04. He's going to manage it, but Sororono's going to get a bit of biffo. Then to the front left, he couldn't quite manage anything there. Has to be worried about Andy Barber who might try and sneak his way through trying to take a really tight line but he doesn't use the drive as the sky point racing driver he knows better than to fight through this middle sector and trying to open it up here Mickelson looks like he's really struggling like he's damaged yeah pretty hard to tell from here at the moment but oh Jack Mickelson very very uh very very keen to get on that throttle you can see the back of the car stepping out that of course has opened the door for Serono there, doesn't need a second invitation. He dives down the inside, gets a good run as they complete yet another lap. So I think Jack Mickelson there just losing a couple of positions that lap. Not done. Not going to give it up without a fight. Lots of respect and hand room shown. Yeah. They are side by side diving into turn two. This can only end back in the single file. Well, through two. Thank you very much. Taya Serono had to really work for that one and he got the pass done. Now it's time for Andy Barber start thinking about the way he tries to get this through and it might be a close shave around the Chicago circuit to try and make the overtake to try and find the passes on the brakes they go they'll fall nicely into line Tom Pritchard might be thinking about jumping on the back of this group on top of it uh, as well to try and give some help then to the number five teammate that he's got forward but it looks like it's settled down everyone's found a rhythm once again and this is a rhythm track You've got to find a rhythm early, otherwise you're going to be so out of shape that the seconds just bleed away. Yeah, a long way to go as well, so you can't allow any of that red mist to really take hold. You've got to make sure you've got a clean, straight car, particularly for the uh, the last 10 laps, because if you've pushed hard now and you allow yourself to get into a little battle, that's probably not going to make it or break your race. Um, or very well could break your race, I guess, by uh, just putting yourself in a situation. Thomas Hintz might have a great chance of making a pass here into turn number one. He looks down the inside right now in the Jinx Shifters machine. Oh, big contact! Round goes Thomas Hintz, Tali Antic, with nowhere left to go. 
ends up turning around number 62. He's been staring at the back of him for 21 laps, and all of a sudden, it's Thomas Hins facing the wrong way. Yeah, it looks like Hinsey had a really, really good run down the straight and uh, made that most of that opportunity where he had a... There was a limited opportunity, like you said, 21 laps to follow in Talianchich around and uh, felt that was the time to make the move stick. I kind of think they made their way out of the corner. We'll have a look at the VRS replay here. Well and truly up to the B pillar here as they hit the brakes. Talianchich giving him plenty of room. Just well, a little bit of contact. Well, it's all down to Talianchic. He loses the back end, and as he's trying to gather it back up and he points it straight, he's just not been able to get it away from Thomas Hens, who's expecting a little bit more room, wasn't going to budge, left in the racing room. You have to feel a bit sorry there for Thomas Hens. He's desperately unlucky in that situation to find himself back, and Michael Talianchic still finding himself pointing forward. So I'd say if there was anywhere to point blame, it would be Michael Talianchic, but how much? I'm not sure it's a massive amount really in terms of the context of the race that we've got going on so we'll see what the stewards do they will have a different look at it but here's a look then at the 028 still going out there is uh, martin hallinan and uh, still trying to get a lot of work done because number 30 of luke crumb holds the lead and holds the lead by a pretty uh, sizable margin at this point hallinan looking very much like the walking wounded right now yeah well the car does look pretty B grade out there at the moment. It isn't a super high downforce track, so uh, the fact he hasn't got his rear wing uh, isn't going to be too detrimental to his speed out there at the moment, and uh, it was a fairly square hit, so suspension-wise, I think he is pretty safe. So while it doesn't look pretty, it's uh, certainly not uh, the end of his, his lap. He's, he's got a long way to go yet, so another safety car can bring the field back up, and we, we know how quickly that... Uh, the safety car can get called just a little bit of an error and he could be back into this real soon no further action then on hallen's instant off the restart there so uh for him uh the damage is gonna have to try and work his way back through this is the race for third position on screen right now blake warboys and sebastian Vandel are both looking at a podium and both thinking this would be really big right now for our championships if we can manage to stay or move up into that third place. Andrew Dyson leading this race outright. Only 1.1 seconds over Rick Kuznetsov at the front of the field, up to 1.2 right now. You'd say for Seb Varndau, he's just been able over the course of this season to stay calm and do what's needed. He is really there and having fun. Just had a little here at Tom Pritchard on the radio. It looks like that he's just uh, let through Thomas Hins and said, you know what? I'm not really going to fight it right now. Look at the scraping on the left-hand side of my car. I'm not really going to be uh, in this one for a race against someone as quick as you, my boy. Yeah, again, you can get suckered in and, and fight somebody else's battle and uh, come off second best. Fair bit of damage there on the 91 car, just down the side. So he's obviously come into the wars throughout the course of the race so far, but Hinsey getting the move done, already pulling a little bit of a gap. So probably a pretty smart move there by the Sky Point driver there just to uh, allow Hinsey through and continue on his own race. A drive through penalty for car 777, which will be the pursuit sim racing machine of Michael Talianchich. So he will have to come down and take his penalty, not take service as he comes through. And that is big for his race. He is in sixth position right now. He's got Matt Stewart just behind him. He'll let him go. And I think he knows straight away that he was in trouble the moment that Thomas Hins was turned around. And Talianchich with one arm, I get struggles a lot more with that sort of leaving a little bit of room out there but what a drive it's been right now for those two in sixth and seventh as now all of a sudden slowly creeping back into the race for third position overall right now jason it's thomas freeman we haven't really talked too much about him he was rear gunner earlier on for david coleman who's dropped way down the order now thomas freeman's trying to do all the work on his own yeah, well, all you've got to do is just stay probably within a second of the car in front because if you get find yourself too close, you can easily get caught up as a car runs wide or bounces off a wall. And uh, Thomas Freeman there at the moment, putting in some pretty consistent lap times. You can see the uh, lap 23 there is actually quite a big improvement. So that really highlights what you've just uh, noted there. 
and he's uh, managed to sneak onto the back of uh, Van Dill there, sitting in P4 pretty comfortably at the moment. Almost a second on that last lap to just close down the gap. He finds a bit of magic now trying to open up and keep Sebastian Van Dell honest in this phase of the race. We're very close approaching the halfway stage. That'll be in about five laps time. And we're expecting this to be a one stop from now to the end of this race from when pretty much everybody came in and decided to make their strategy calls outright so some work still to do with the context of this race and with everyone still chasing but there are still a number of important battles up and down the order to keep in mind as there is number one still out there on screen it is worth keeping an eye out though on where Tally Antic should come out in comparison to everyone else and the answer is he's down in 13th position right now having a race with Tom Pritchard so Pritchard is going to have been in a position where he's seen Thomas Hins and let him go. I wonder if he'd do the same for Triple Seven, the boss of Pursuit, heading towards Roosevelt Corner, turn four. Yeah, I think we're going to find out sooner rather than later because uh, Triple Seven is right on the back of 91. This might be the opportunity here we see. As uh, looks like they're still taking the racing line, so either he doesn't know he's there or Michael Talianchich might be in for a battle to find his way around doesn't do it here he might sneak away up here and turn seven he's got a monster run off of the exit but he's going to back out of it doesn't want to really risk it here into a point of the track which effectively you lose half the road going through here with the attenuators there on the inside the very tough turn eight and then flicking around the long turn number nine over onto michigan avenue here at turn 10 and then again at turn 11 to make that next run right you're trying to really open it up i think tom fritch is on the radio saying i don't really want to fight you right now i really don't want to be there in this position you know what he's going to do he's going to move over to the right hand side michael talianch is going to get a drive because that is going to be a free position there for tom pritchard who is prioritizing a ticket to the end first and foremost yeah, but what it has allowed is Dave Coleman to sneak up on this group as well. So Coleman having a big dive under brakes here into turn number two. Looks like he just might get the job done. He gets a good drive out and he uh, ducks in front of the cut. Oh, car, big issue, big issue, Brown. And Hintz is in it as well. A massive pile up then at turn four. And surely they're going to have to call a safety car for it. So the car's there, obviously getting plenty of notice. That there was a yellow flag ahead. You did see a car in the background dive through the uh, oh, oh bang and there's a safety car and they're all gonna pile in now because that you got crumb involved in it that was a big hit there from Jai Schultz who's caught up in that a massive massive accident at turn four and it's a choke point it's a blind right hander as well the VRS replay and it all starts with car number five going in way way too oh. quick Bounces back onto the racing line, and then, of course, the rest is just collateral damage as they come piling to through turn number four there at the moment. Talianchich weaving through, threading the eye of the needle and uh, being very, very lucky there to sneak through, but it, uh, she's not over there. Becomes car number 27 and Crumb and a few other cars on the scene doing a pretty good job to pull it up. Yeah, they do a fantastic job, and... Uh that at that stage of the race is not what you want to be seeing when you're going through that you 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 blink you hope that you find that there's nothing there when you go and turn in and uh, everyone just take a breather we've got to still got a race on our hands but it has completely thrown everything in let's take a look here on the top it's exactly how difficult it is to spot it so you can see the smoke there one car off on the outside but wow look you're blind. You've got no way of knowing that Andy Barber's car is there. And that, for Jai Schultz, will be a learning curve that you have to look at your black box relative. You have to look at the yellow flags and you have to expect anything to happen. And that, that yellow flag, so often when it comes to sim racing, Jason, is advisory. Sometimes you have to look at that and go, no, it's a mandatory around the street circuit. Yeah, there's, uh, there's times and places when you can be a little bit flexible with uh, just how much 
caution you do show um, but leading into turn four there obviously the track was blocked and it caught a lot of these drivers off guard so it's really mixed up things at the moment so some of these drivers have just had a few free kicks and uh, other cars have been towed to the pits and then that'll be the end of them tonight so i reckon out of that we might have potentially lost another two permanently and another handful back in the pits for a bit of damage repair it has completely shaken up the field and i tell you what someone who has shaken his way up the field now is troy mortensen he's now up to ninth he yeah, so abs he's absolutely skyrocketed here jason yeah the first of our sports drivers there finding himself inside the top 10 so it's a gap back to Delaney, another three spots on track behind. So doing a really good job there, mixing it with the uh, the pro drivers at the moment. But we are only on lap 27 of 58, so we're not even at the halfway point, and we already have oh. a... Oh, every time you watch that, it just makes you feel sick. He's trying to get out of the way as well, and if he just stayed on that inside there, did Andy Barber and just hit reverse, he would have saved about five cars different races there going through. He does the right thing now. He holds. He waits for the tow. Try and get through. That's Thomas Hins. And here's Dry Shots. Bang! And that is a big, heavy incident. Now, Crumb's just going to sneak through on that inside. A little bit of scraping to the front left. But outside of that, pretty much goes through there. And this is a learning curve as well for pretty much everybody in a situation like that. Because you don't often get a blind corner like that in racing. There's a reason why this is a proof of concept circuit. This was built as a track dedicated uh, as an idea for whether NASCAR could go and visit uh, Chicago, Illinois streets and have a race and hold a race in that sort of sense. But really what you take a look at when you get to that right hander at turn four, Roosevelt corner, we're coming up to it once again. It is one line of trouble. This is Luke Crump's perspective now of how exactly this is see smoke everywhere on the screen i'm gonna go to the left hand side he just squeezes through might have a slight little bit of damage there in the lcr esports car but just about got away with it yeah he's very very lucky to find that little bit of a gap and uh managed to, to get through i don't think there'll be any detrimental damage to his car but i was very impressed by what dave coleman managed to do so his uh his foresight Obviously, the yellow flag came out. He was the first to take evasive action and go through that runoff area behind the actual accident. So um, his, his time in iRacing, his expertise and his knowledge and foresight just really shone through there. So he managed to uh, avoid any potential damage of what is it could have been a race ending uh, circumstance. It definitely could have been a race ending incident then. And it could have definitely have shaken up a lot and i tell you what it does at this stage dyson kuznetsov warboys vandal freeman the top five have been relatively unchanged all race long just one driver outside the top five moving in there thomas freeman but teo sorono now finds himself in sixth place he started 20th today on the grid and he's now thinking of maybe a top five maybe a top three might be on the cards it will be 30 laps to go we get ourselves back underway eight laps short of a window was this safety car which could have changed things would have put a lot in the perspective of these drivers andrew dyson will once again looking on his third restart of this race to hold up the field to hold up triple eight and rick kuznetsov and try and get that launch on the relatively medium str uh, late straight towards turn one he'll go again big wiggle though on the power we get ourselves back to green flag running then here from this wonderful wonderful racetrack but a little bit of a wiggle for andrew dyson just about covers it blake warboys was having a little bit of a search then to try and get the place he doesn't quite manage that but we're back to racing though here from the streets of chicago yeah back under green flag conditions again and the drivers just need to reset and get themselves back into a rhythm as soon as they can. The tyre temperatures will have dropped off over that safety car period. Uh, again, Dyson pulling himself a bit of a gap uh, prior to the safety car, and he is out to repeat the same process again. Rick Konechoff sitting in a second, just half a second back, and uh, Blake Warboys again, just not quite a second off the back of Rick. So very evenly spaced out at the moment. You can see just how tight these 90 degree turns are. There's not a lot of room for error so from that angle, it really highlights just how pinpoint accurate a lot of these drivers have to be. 
Tally Anchik took the most aggressive there. Jack Mickelson will once again have to look at his defensive prowess they go through as they flick through turn eight. Now the long left of turn number nine, leading back to turn 10, the fast right, which is about 140 kilometers an hour for hitting the brakes, getting it down to just 83 for putting the power back on and over the bridge once more to the final section turn number 12 at 97 kilometers an hour you then look to stab the power back on thomas freeman's got a look by the way he might think about a move on seb varndell he's not close enough yet to make the move but uh, this group as well tally Antic, he's sat there he wants to get through so too david coleman who's been up there in this race but i tell you what thomas freeman now is in this really awkward position here where he looked for just a moment jason like he was going to go and make a move now he's going to have to look behind. Here's a replay, though. Bottom of your screen, how quickly it can go from hero to zero. This is a hefty hit in the wall. Yeah, luckily there was no one around him at the time, but just a little bit heavy under accelerator, or not quite heavy enough under brakes, I guess, leading into that uh, very, very tricky corner. Uh, that left-hander there before he went up over the bridge. So hard hit into the right-hand armco there on the uh, side of the track, but obviously enough to keep going and not detrimental to his race he's still out there circulating but of course he will have some a bit of steering damage out there he's got to manage for the moment well you'll have to manage it and you'll have to try and adapt very very quickly fourth fifth sixth and you could say seventh mickelson's trying to hold on to this group here the rona is going to get there and it gets even worse for shane Nowens. you can see the front completely off the car the front left tire was hanging off there he puts it in the barriers but crucially he got himself right on the brakes because of that speed that he's lost from the top end from the hit he's able to keep it going that is a car which is trying very very hard not to get going uh <laughs> to the end of this race right now but he'll try and get it home that much we can say there's 155 can't quite keep close enough then for the moment so freeman's going to have a couple laps then to sit back a little bit and now everyone looks to try and settle in to the rhythm here for the second half of this race. Yeah, I can see uh, Serrano there just hitting a lot of those uh, walls on the exit of a lot of the corners. So he's, he is pushing very, very hard. He's using every single millimetre of the track that he's got available to him and potentially some more. So he's out there at the moment. He's struggling really, really hard to keep on the back of Freeman. And every time he hits a wall, it's just going to give a little bit of uh, hope for Mickelson in front that uh, he can jump onto the back of this group. Well, Jack Mickelson, of course, had his own moments, dropped back through the field. Mike Taliancic would like to have a move, and it's again, just glance at the wall there as Matt Stewart. You've got to be careful, especially turn seven. It's so easy to get it wrong there. But now running through 10 and into 11, Taliancic is bottled up and he wants to try and get himself through. And that's why we talk so much about how track position is the most important element when it comes to a race on a street circuit. Big kick and oversteer there. Coming on the power for Jack Mickelson. Yeah, certainly not doing his tyres any favours. They're putting plenty of heat into him as he gets the accelerator pedal. Gets pretty excited there. Manages to keep it off the wall. He's just going to have to take a deep breath and calm down and let those tyres to cool down because if he doesn't he can find himself into the uh, wall real quick up here as we make our way to turn four it's already caught a number of drivers off guard looks like he makes his way through there the car turns in pretty nicely without too much drama so might have uh, survived that one but just got to you know either win it or lose it just based on the accelerator application David Coleman all of a sudden finds a move on Michael Taliancic who will drop the place under braking into turn number six so Coleman thinks he's got a bit of pace and just like that he was nowhere going through turns four and five and Taliancic turns through five in fact it was Taliancic hitting the wall on the inside at turn five for the turn in which is what opened the door up for Coleman to make the move So already Taliantri is just dropping off the back of Coleman, so I'm not sure whether there is a little bit of damage from some clips of the wall or whether it's a little bit of uh, concentration level dropping. Yeah, now.
Yeah, Coleman didn't need a second invitation. He, he saw the opportunity open up and there wasn't a lot Talianchis could do about it. But he is staying on the back of Coleman, so obviously the the damage to the 777 car there, you can't see any cosmetic damage from the camera view, so he must be out there still circulating. And uh, he'll just take that as a lesson learned. Certainly will take it as a lesson learned right now, I'm sure of it. So here's another look at it then through the right warmth. I've seen that ruin races more, but he gets away with one and will, as such, have to sit behind the 640 and watch as uh, now Coleman in ninth place will try and make some progress. There's your leader in sport. It is Luke Crump, the super sport leader. He's got himself a hefty margin of about six seconds to the wounded Martin Hallinan. And for Luke Crump, this is a keep it out of trouble on the LCR Esports driver, especially with the amount of retirees we've seen today, might score the biggest points all this season that we'll see for the Super Sport category. Yeah, we'll see from the moment lights went green, it really is a matter of keeping it off the wall and making sure you're there for the final aspect of the race. So uh, a lot of these drivers have taken that on board and managed to avoid a bit of carnage. A few drivers have got caught up in some incidents that weren't necessarily their own doing. But at the moment, there's a, a really good battle on between Michelson and Stewart. They're separated by just literally a couple of hundredths of a second. Stewart looking pretty keen to get past Mickelson here. And uh, it's, I think it's going to take a little mistake from, from uh, Mickelson before Stewart can get around him. Oh, oh, no, upside down, upside down, just like that. There goes Teo Sororono's race. Oh, unbelievable, that's another safety, that has to be a safety car, surely. Well, that's the best impersonation of a turtle we've seen all night. He'll be uh, strapped in upside down there, sliding ever so slowly towards the inside of the track. But more importantly, that's off the racing line. It is, but it is a safety car. And oh, ju uh, just as we went away to replay, someone's put it in the wall and it's Troy Maudson. Look at that, look how heavy that hit is. Nowhere to go off of the hit of the barriers, careening into the inside barriers and upside down. That's a heavy, heavy impact. Yeah, he's still on the accelerators, but obviously uh, we all know that that's not gonna go anywhere in a hurry when the wheels aren't touching the ground. So it's uh, very, very disappointing. That was our biggest mover and shaker for the night. So up from P20, so. That's really going to uh, allow... Oh, you can see Mortson there. That's where he's missed the uh, the incident at turn four and five and uh, managed to clip the wall in the process on the outside there. But again, made his way through the barriers without too much drama, so he's out circulating again. Now, a number of drivers have come in and made a pit stop. Andrew Dyson is one of them who has come in and made the stop. You've got Warboys, Varndell, Coleman, Freeman. They're all in except... For car triple eight, Rick Kuznetsov, who is staying out. Now, this is a huge gamble at this phase of the race to stay out if you're Rick Kuznetsov, because you are hoping that you're going to get a free pit stop somewhere later down the road. You're not going to get that now that you're pacing behind those drivers who are going to be able to close up. So for Rick Kuznetsov, he knows he's got one thing and one thing to rely on, and that is a boatload of cautions to come along, which allows him to clutch that fuel and bring himself to the end without any worries at all on what is there around him. Yeah, but uh, the famous saying goes, safety cars breed safety cars, so that may be the case. But more importantly, you see there Dyson has given up the lead of the race, put on fresh rubber, but he still finds himself on the back of Rick Knetsoff, so... Rick's really going to have his hands full at the moment once these lights go green and they're back under racing conditions again because he's not going to have the tyres under him that Dyson has behind, so there will be plenty of pressure being applied. It's just a matter of whether Rick can keep his mind in the game. Um, it is a hard circuit to pass on, so yeah, this could go either way real quick. It could. I tell you what, it is completely shaken up this race. Rick Snetsov is your race leader. It's Dyson in second. Now up into third is Matt Stewart. Michael Taliancic now finds himself fourth. In fifth position now is uh, Hallinan, who hasn't come in and made a stop then uh, in that run. David Coleman now finds himself up in sixth. Blake Warboys and Seb Varndell and uh, Freeman find themselves way down the order now. They're seventh, eighth, and ninth, and they've got a lot of work to do. They probably took a lot of fuel on in that st uh, stint and took maximum service to go, you know what? 
We're expected to go through. 21.7 seconds in the box there. Thomas Freeman. I wonder how much difference it is. Jack Mickelson had a 23 second pit stop. I wonder what those drivers in front there. You can see Colin Findland, only 10 and a half seconds. That's just a splash. That's a top up. The other aspect we haven't really spoke about is not just about track position, which uh, Rick Knipsoff has at the moment, but we are limited to three sets of tyres. We've got to keep that in mind. So Dyson's chucked on a set of tyres with 24 laps to go. We don't know exactly what he's used already up to this point of the race. So he could have used up all his tyre allocation and he's got to make these tyres last till the uh, the run home for the chequered flag. Whereas Rick Knipsoff still potentially has a set of tyres or two up his sleeve. Allen will drop himself to the back of the field. He takes a pit stop then here with 23 laps to go at the Windy City. Our fourth caution here today, and quite crucially about our four cautions, they have all happened at exactly the same spot. Turn number four, Roosevelt Corner, has been the big game changer here today. There's the number 98 machine trying to chase back onto the group. That's Aiden Ford. He was one driver who got caught out, but he's trying to find a finish. Three laps down here in this race and trying everything. You've also got Brown uh, out there on circuit. Seth Brown, nine laps down. He had a 16-minute pit stop. So he's basically went from the last caution, which he got absolutely bundled up into, into where he is now, and he will take his wave around through then as he runs through towards the most dangerous corner on track turn number four yeah so the actual uh, race field staying on the hard left hand side of the circuit allowing these cars to get a lap back so uh, they are under safety car conditions we are allowing a number of drivers to pass the field and uh, find, make their way to the back of the group again so it doesn't give them a uh, a lot of these drivers aren't on one lap down but it does give him a sniff for a, an opportunity to make a couple of passes and a couple of positions before the end of the race is out i want to have a look at shane now on the front he just came whistling by but the front of the car look well you, you talk about engine cooling keeping the engine temperatures down i think he's taking it to a bit of an extreme don't you think yeah on top of that he's probably losing about another 60 or 70 kilos compared to the rest of the cars out there on circuit but uh Will he make will he will he make weight when he gets back to the pits? No, oh, I wouldn't wouldn't think so. There's uh, guards missing. There's front bars missing. There's bonnets missing. So all sorts of things going wrong with that car at the moment. Looks alright from the back view. Looks fantastic from the back. Yeah. Just from from oh. the front, she looks about six inches too short. Yeah, a bit of a problem there for Shane Nowens. They are going green, though, this time by with Rick Kuznetsov in control of the field. So this is about a full tank. Everyone's going to be keeping an eye out, seeing how far they can stretch this one to go. Kuznetsov is going to have to have a little bit of help here because he has been left hung out to dry, staying out. He's going to hope for three cautions between now and the end of this race if he wants to win this one outright. Otherwise, Andrew Dyson and co are going to be in the box seat. Look out for the likes of Matt Stewart, who started 16th today. He's up to third. Taliancic has had a drive-through penalty. He's back up into fourth position. It's pretty much anybody's race right now. Let's get back to racing. Green flag here from the windy city of Chicago. And Andrew Dyson immediately looking aggressive. Taliancic up the inside looking for third place. He's almost got it, but he can't quite get it done. Uh, Van Deel's got the uh, inside line for turn number two for the switchback, so Talanchis could have to fall into line, but what it has opened the door for David Coleman to get a good run down the back straight. Here comes Andrew Dyson, have to go the long way around, three and four, almost in the wall there on the outside, he now tips it into four, tiptoeing away through his Richter's net, so I'm trying to hold him up, and now there's Coleman going up the inside of Taliantic once again moves his way through. Dyson still looking for the race lead. Warboy's now trying to have a look as well in fifth position. Dyson will go around the outside, trying to get it done at turn six, but Kuznetsov gets it sorted on the inside, holds it into the wall, goes Coleman now in fourth position, and he'll start dropping back. Warboy's to the outside at seven. Taliantic takes his place. Yeah, for a circuit that's well known for single file through these tight sections there, we had the Taliantic Coleman going side by side for about four or five corners in a row. So uh, a lot of respect there shown for these drivers. They are driving around each other on a regular basis, so they know exactly 
um, what each other is capable of. And uh, Tally Antrich there in the triple seven, just winning out that little battle. Coleman falling back into line. And of course, War Boys was just sitting there rubbing his hands together. He could see an opportunity, but it didn't quite fall his way this time. Not quite, but there's still a long way to make those chances. Coleman had to think about it, but really deep in on the brakes is Tally Antrich. Has he gone too deep? in through turn one he was able to get it gathered up but he lost a lot of time doing so has to defend now into turn two runs a little bit wide boxes out there slightly uh david Coleman. so now here comes the charge for blake warboys at the bike for turn four he's got the inside at three and crucially it's late 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 on the brakes from blake and he gets it through look who's trying to sneak away up the inside it's going to be contact and varnell has tipped david Coleman around yeah, Coleman sitting there right on the racing line on the exit of turn number five. Of course, again, the yellow flag's being shown. It looks like everybody manages to avoid it. Jayton, incoming Jayton. <laughs> Ready? Oh, it's in the wall. I think most of us have tried it and very few have succeeded. So points for trying there from Coleman. It was going to look absolutely spectacular if he pulled it off. But uh, just put himself into the wall and caused a bit more damage to the back of his car. But uh, I think frustration there taking hold more than anything. They just went the wrong way. That was the issue there. Top two, though, is Netsov, Dyson, who are trying to break away from Matt Stewart, who is in third place, because Netsov, in reality, is really hoping for something else. Let's take another look at this, then. Going through turn five. Vandel's just up the inside. There's the smallest, faintest bit of contact, and it's just enough to send him going. That angle didn't really do it much justice there, but there for Seb Varnell. The last thing he wants when he's second in the championship is to get involved with drivers who he's not racing the title for. Yeah, it's a matter of uh, picking your battles and Varnell's done a really good job so far tonight. He's been uh, sitting this on the back. That's a street circuit turn five. It's a very tough corner to go too wide in. Yeah, it looks like he was pinched a little bit there right on the apex. It's just clipped the wall, and, of course, that spat him out into the outside of David Coleman there. So it's uh, stewards are going to be having a look at that, and uh, we'll have to wait to see how the cards fall into place. But uh, Van Bell will be waiting nervously, I think, after that. Yeah, he certainly will. And uh, he'll be just hoping that he sees no further action or racing incident, one of the two that crops itself up at this stage. Flying through, though, your top two. And Andrew Dyson, I think, is in a really privileged position right now here, Jason. I think he's got a really good chance to say, you know what? I don't have to make this move out on circuit to win this race. You didn't pit the last stop. You can't possibly go to the end of the race from here. Yeah, correct. He's, he's probably sitting in the prime seat, so while he's not out on track leading this race at the moment, he's probably uh, got the best rubber under him at the moment. And unless we have another safety car to really mix things up again, he knows he's just got to sit there, apply a little pressure. Maybe he can apply the pressure and, and Rick can make oh, a mistake. Oh, maybe he'll just go for it now. Around the outside, a mistake by Rick Kuznetsov. And all of a sudden, as they head to turn four, can he shut the door? Oh, he just about can. Oh, Andrew Dyson, that was so brave to shut the door at turn three, heading to the dangerous turn four. And suddenly, Kuznetsov now has got to get on the offensive right now because he can't just sit behind and win this race. He has to go out there and force Dyson into a mistake. Yeah, well, Dyson's a pretty cool, calm, collected character out there at the moment. As you've seen earlier in the race, he's, uh, he's led a number of these laps, so he knows what he's got to do just to circulate and uh, how hard he does have to push. So, Knetsov there hasn't got the rubber under him to go with Dyson at the moment. You can already see a couple of car length gap being pulled. But uh, a little clip of the wall, and Knetsov can find himself back into this, back underneath the rear wing of Dyson at least. Oh, he certainly can, and that's the plan. Can you get back onto the rear? But Kuznetsov knows his last pit stop was on lap 15. We're on lap 40 of this race. So he is due very, very soon to come in and make a pit stop in the next couple of laps, I'm sure. Side by side, by the way, now, as we've got moving through, that's Seb Varnell making the pass on Michael Taliancic as uh, that goes through. And that is thank you very and much there for car number four, who makes the overtake then and gets up into fourth position and will have eyes on third. And when Kuznetsov pits, it will be eyes on second position 
in this race. And again, it's damage limitation for car number four, but still knows 30 places, uh, 30 points behind in the championship, still needs to find a place where he's going to bring that back. That's as easy as it gets in towards turn number one. Tally Antic knows he's not fighting Varndale, who's on a charge. Yeah, Tally Antic did everything except for rolling out the red carpet there as Vandell made his way down as they crossed the line with 18 to go. Teammates here on track, car number 21, uh, sorry, 24 and car number 91. So I'm sure they're talking to each other. There's no arguments oh. between those two drivers. Let's turn four again. This is Colin Findland. His first start of the season, he just put it straight into the tyres at four. And that's why he's got the damage. And this is how quickly it will go wrong once again. Another demonstration and another victim. Bang! Yeah, hard hit. Lucky to get out of that uh, without being stuck into those tyres. Bounced off the racing line to the inside of the circuit. But of course, he'll be feeling it in car. A long way to go with 18 laps. In comes Kuznetsov. He has to make the stop. He could not go any longer. He missed the call to come in. He thought that he wasn't going to get there. But if he has a fresh set of tyres and there's a safety car, he might have a chance to run the field and get himself back into it. It's a long way from here, but he's on the very much a strategy of he needs a caution to bring himself back into it. Matt Stewart is having to really start to think about does he defend now because he's got Sebastian Varndell, number four, right behind him, who is absolutely going to want to move up into second position. He needs to get into second position. Yeah, I don't think Dyson is going to have too much trouble fuel-wise to get home. I'm not exactly sure on the numbers here, but uh, really that, that's the only strategy that's going to bring uh, Kenetsov back into this. If Kenetsov can get home from this point and Dyson's got to fuel again, then uh, that might be his only chance to find himself with a good points hole this evening. Well, here's the issue that you got. Andrew Dyson's got a 3.8 second lead. If needs be, he can lift and coast 100 meters around every single corner, drop a second a lap and still have enough fuel to make it home. Yeah, it's really uh, the, the strategy that uh, Rick Knetsoff there has taken the gamble on. It doesn't seem to have uh, paid dividend at this point. As we just see Van Dell clip the inside as he comes onto the start finish line. He is tucked underneath that rear wing of Matt Stewart. Looks like he's pretty eager and he's pretty keen to get the move done. He sticks his nose out on the inside into turn number one. Oh, we... Like that, he sends him in the wall. Seb Varndell absolutely brutally takes Matt Stewart out of the podium. He keeps it going, but I tell you what, Matt Stewart might want to have a word, and he does. He gets onto the stewards. He says, I want to look at that because that wasn't fair. I left the room. Yeah, again, Van Dell being quite aggressive there to get the move done. And, and what we, we did mention earlier on in the race, you are going to have to be aggressive, but you've got to be selective about how aggressive you are. So BRS replay shows exactly what happened. Big dive under brakes, a little bit of room shown, and Van Dell just running a little bit wide there on the exit. And, of course, uh, that purple and white car there, nowhere to go. The 0-4 car into the wall. Didn't leave him room. One car went to leave me outside. It didn't look like he managed that. The thing for uh, the 04 out there at this stage, Matt Stewart, he doesn't have the black and orange mechanical flag, and Varndell is pulling over to redress the place. So you'll use that as his penalty and say, you know what? I took the penalty. I, I dropped three places for it to say I didn't make that pass cleanly. And so he gets the word of it, redresses the position, which is a very Australian way of saying, you know what? fair play that's my issue suddenly it's Michael Taliantic in second and Blake Warboys in third place and these two have had two very different races to get to exactly the same point Warboys has been the third fastest driver all night as he clips the wall on the outside then going in towards turn two Michael Taliantic has been up and down and all around and suddenly has magic himself away to second place yeah, at the point where he got a drive through penalty, he probably didn't expect himself to find him, to find himself this far up the race order again, still with 15 laps to go. So Tally Ancic has managed to uh, keep a cool, calm, collected head. Very, very hard thing to do around this circuit and uh, finding himself back in a pretty, pretty comfortable position at the moment, P2. Seven seconds off the lead, probably can't even see the leader on track at the moment, but uh, it's all about track position here at the moment for Taliancic. Got to keep it clean as we watch the leader come through turn number seven. Followed by, oh, big hard hit there in the background as well. Yeah, well, that was Blake Warboys getting another tap then to the outside, and suddenly 
Vardell and Stewart too. And oh, in the wall. In the wall goes Vardell. And all of a sudden, I think it's getting to him here. Number four. He knows he can't afford to lose time. It's up by Matt Stewart. And he is now at risk of losing his entire car, let alone the one position that he won't get making this pass. Yeah, still game on, still facing in the right direction. He was tucked underneath that rear wing of uh, Thompson there, and it's not a very easy thing to do because you can e quite uh, easily be suck it into over driving the thing, missing your braking mark, uh, which is potentially what happened there. So sometimes it's a little bit easy to be half a second or a second back, get a little bit of toe and have a clean bit of track where you can see exactly where you're going. But of course, you're not going to make a move from that far back. So it's a bit of a fine line. You've got to manage yourself and the race as it goes on. There's Rick Kuznetsov at the bottom of your screen. He's in 10th position right now. And he is 38 seconds off of your race leader, Andrew Dyson, at this stage of the race with 14 laps to go. It is not the slowest pit lane in the world. It is a rather fast pit lane around here at the Chicago Street Circuit. And here comes the look now up over the hill. A big send to the inside at seven. Can he get it stopped? And he's going to send it to the fence again. Here is Seb Varnell. Four and oh four. Error 404. It seems like clean passing can't be found. No, putting everything on the line, like you said, he was just knew how de how uh, dedicated he had to be and how important it was to get past. But uh, to book cleanly, he's, he's had two cracks at it now, and both times Stewart's ended up in the uh, in the wall. So it looks like looks like he's driving away with it at the moment. VRS replay shows exactly how this all unfolded. Well, he gets that this time. He gets that, and at a section of track where the track's falling away from you like that. You have to say the difference maker on that second instant compared to the first one is Stewart's there. And that's trouble for the 640. That's David Coleman and the Fishy Motorsport car, who's in a very precarious position on the circuit. So uh, he's now uh, going to be in trouble. And that is on the exit. Uh, that's actually through the barriers then. He's gone around at turn four and uh, has pulled it out and away looking for a safe tow. Yeah, so we potentially won't see the safety car being called. We'll have to wait to see whether race directors decide that is an actual incident. Again, virtual racing school replay will explain exactly what happens hard on the brakes into the corner that's caught so many drivers out. Safety car's called. That's big. That is huge. It's called for David Coleman out there on track who reversed the car away and out of position, but they feel that he's not in a position where he can safely be towed away from the scene. And as such, they're going to call a safety car and a lifeline for Rick Kuznetsov at the most important time. Yeah, this is going to fill, group the uh, field back up. Dyson out the front at the moment. We've got a healthy nine-second lead that's going to get chewed away real, real quick. Uh, but as we see, Kuznetsov sitting in P10. He's got plenty of good speed around him. But as we've seen before, having speed is one thing, but making a move stick successfully and cleanly can be a different kettle of fish 12 laps to go any worries about fuel will now be mitigated it will be a straight up fight for this one who wants it andrew dyson michael taliancic blake warboys your top three and let's not forget that seb varndell will once again be under investigation for his issues with stewart jack mickelson in to take a stop I won't be surprised if those who have saved a set of tyres, who have managed to save a set of tyres here, Jason, now's the time where they uncork it and try and find a bit of time. We've been talking about this track temperature right now of 34 degrees. Right now, you can gain anywhere up to a second on a good set of tyres right now. and That could be a huge difference maker for those who have tyres who can run up through the field. Because Netsov in eighth place. And get this, car 30, Luke Crumb, leader of Super Sport in seventh, is going to have the most aggressive Rick Kostetsov behind him to try and get back on this restart. Yeah, tyres are going to be a very, very important factor here, not just for this particular race, because that's what we've been focusing on. But of course, uh, the field is well and truly mixed up. You see Crum there in a good position for a great uh, haul of points before the night's out. But uh, fresh tyres now with uh, some of these drivers and the opportunity to get a couple of extra free or a couple extra places as the 10 laps unfold could have a detrimental effect to the championship in both the 
uh, Pro Series as well as the Sport Series. Andrew Dyson has seen this race from the front for the majority of it. He has seen time and again his lead at the front of this field get snapped back. He has led 40 laps of this race. He has led all bar six of the laps here today. But it doesn't matter how many times you lead a lap around through, you've got to lead lap 58 to its conclusion. And that for Andrew Dyson is a plan for a victory. Michael Taliancic is on one hand driving at this one. He's in second position. He's driving an absolutely stellar race back into position. Blake Warboy's in third, has always been there, has always had a chance. He hasn't uncorked it just yet like we know he can. He's been very patient here today around the streets of Chicago. It has been a wonderful drive so far around Grant Park and over around the Upper Hutchinson Field and the Buckingham Fountain here as we sit pretty much right up near the Navy Pier and the Ohio Street Beach. We are right in brilliant Huntington territory right now on the South Loop. This is exactly what we say when we come to Chicago. What we expect from Chicago is close racing, tough racing, and ultimately it's gonna be 10 laps when they cross the line of who's got everything that they possibly can to throw at this race here right now, and lapping begins. Yeah, Chicago is well known. We've got a lot of great sporting uh, heritage here. And whether it be the Chicago Bulls, I think the Cubs, or might be the Bears as well. And of course, uh, now the uh, street circuit that this year, 2023, will become a reality um, after uh, Irish Racing introduced it about 12 months ago. So it's not a circuit that's really highlighted a lot on the service, um, but it is a circuit that is very, very unforgiving and really does manage to uh, create a few unforeseen circumstances as we've seen here tonight we started off with 25 cars looks like we've got 15 still on the lead lap and 16 out there circulating so uh, they're all lined up under safety car conditions at the moment we will have 10 laps to go next time by and uh, she's going to be a short sprint to the rep to the end of the race as the checkered flag drops she absolutely is don't forget as well the uh, chicago blackhawks as well when it comes to the ice hockey so a lot to go through as we take a look then at the skyline here of this windy city, this incredible, incredible racetrack. Wind speeds today have been really calm, so they haven't really had to worry about that. And just as the sun comes out for Andrew Dyson and the Simrigs.com DPR car, he knows that if he wants to add another victory this season, his third this season, he is going to have to be really, really choice about how he gets the restart sorted with the likes of Michael Taliancic. Haven't heard yet the uh, call for the pace car to jump away, which makes me think that we might be going green one lap afterwards. And as such, there'll be another lap to tick off the clock and give another chance then to run forward. How many times are we going to see this sort of scenario play itself out? Not many laps to go. Run away as quickly as you possibly can. We're going to have another lap then to make sure everybody's out of the way, to make sure everybody's in position heading to that final lap. So we're going to have that through. Dyson, Taliancic, Warboys, Freeman, Vandell, and do not forget triple eight the most famous number jason in australian sim racing and motorsports in position number eight he's led six laps of this race but the 95 sim sport car has nothing to lose it's going to throw the kitchen sink and the proverbial book yeah we'll have dyson at the front of this field quite happy to sit under safety car conditions at the moment i would think whereas the other side of the coin connects off buried deep in p8 he will be wanting the safety car to remove itself off the track and give him every single opportunity to make as many places up as he can because every time they are lapping here under the circuit of the uh, safety car conditions, that's taking away more opportunities for Knetsov to get those positions back. So we'll have to keep a very close eye this time around whether the safety car does pull away and I'm sure Knetsov there will have everything crossed available to him that that's the case because uh, he, he just wants every opportunity to make some positions back and minimize the damage. 
um, as championship wise that uh, Chicago has brought to him tonight. Keep an eye out as well on Ty Delaney in the 07 machine as we're on board with Michael Taliancic. The 07 of Ty Delaney is crucial because he's only got two cars between himself and uh, Luke Crum. And if Rick Kuznetsov gets through, then you'd sort of expect Jack Mickelson to try and follow. And all of a sudden, the LCR Esports car is going to be in a little bit of trouble with the Fishy Motorsport car and the Twisted Key Racing Machine, which is there behind for the Super Sport category. That, a race that we will definitely keep an eye out on over the last nine laps worth of racing. We've got nine and a half laps then left of this race. And the DSL welding services safety car is going to pull away from Andrew Dyson as it has done on three occasions already tonight. Once it has pulled away from Rick Kuznetsov tonight. Five safety cars here from this circuit. And they know that this Chicago street circuit has been a brutal one for these drivers. For Andrew Dyson, he knows the Simrix.com DPR car has got himself in a position. He's been in a position in almost every race to challenge for the victory. They'll have to do so again, but he's got a one-armed Michael Taliancic with nothing to lose. He's got Blake Warboys there behind him. Friedman, Barndell, fresh tyres for Rick Kuznetsov. This could be a grandstand finish at the Windy City. He goes early. Oh, he absolutely mugs Taliancic off the line. What a start by Andrew Dyson. Here comes Blake Warboys. He was alert and switched on to it. He's going to go through. A penalty will go through uh, then for car 04. So Matt, uh, sorry, no, that's Barndell who will get the penalty. Barndell gets the penalty for it. Uh, sorry, so he's got a drive-through penalty. Uh, no, he has got a drive-through penalty. I think, believe it will be Stuart who's got a penalty. But it is crucially a good start here uh, from Andrew Dyson. The perfect start from Dyson as Michael Taliancic now is desperately defending that second place. Yeah, Dyson's just uh, taken the opportunity there. Pulled a 1.2 second gap in the first four corners out there on the circuit. So he's got this race under control and it's only his to lose. The real battle at the moment is battle for second, third, fourth, fifth Mitchell. there. Snetzel's already made two places there because he's through on Matt Stewart and he's through on Luke Crum and he's all of a sudden into sixth place. Rick Kuznetsov driving fantastically. He's made two places off of this restart and he'll have eyes forward next because it is Varndell who is the next target then for Triple Eight. Yes, I'm not entirely sure whether Varndell did end up getting a penalty out of all that or not. It's a uh, time will kill. So it could be an opportunity here for Kinetsov. I don't know whether he knows that the black flag has been issued for the car four. Takes a big dive under brakes, gets another position and another job done. So eyes forward for Varndell. He's making hay while the sun shines. Certainly is. Blake Warboys has got to think of the way to make the move. Andrew Dyson already out to a two-second advantage right now. He needs every second he can get his hands on. There is Rick Kuznetsov. We focus at the bottom of your screen in fifth position as he was allowed through there by Seb Varndell because Thomas Freeman will be his next challenge if he can try and move up. Andrew Dyson driving fantastically in these final few stages of this race and trying to hold that on fantastically. You've got Taliacic though, just putting the car in the right places. Blake Warboys does not want to sacrifice his race right now to make one place. If he will take a third, he'll have to take a third, but he wants a second place and he knows there are some very accomplished drivers behind who are wanting to go through and would love, absolutely love, to take the places that are there. You can see the cars uh, diving through the shadows there of the buildings around this Sydney, uh, sorry, Chicago street circuit. Um, the sun's starting to set, so we've uh, we've seen the the change and shift as the sun move around. Of course, the track temperature will change with that as well. So as we've got eight laps to go, the track temperature could play a part in this as the uh, right laps unfold. But at the moment, Dyson's still holding that commanding two and a half second lead to the battle of second, third at the moment. Looks like uh, Talianshic oh. might have just clip the wall there on the exit. Horrible exit for Thomas Freeman. Thank you very much. Rick Kuznetsov gets another one. He's up to four and he's really flying in for the penalty then. It's number four. He did get the penalty then, did Sebastian Varndell. And so too may his championship hopes take a sizable dent here tonight, here around the street circuit of Chicago. 
Now, here's a thing for Blake War boys, because this could be the difference maker for him. We know how close the championship is between third and about eighth place, and these two drivers are right in the thick of it. Yeah, both drivers didn't have uh, great results last week at Phillip Island, so they are uh, in a pretty good position at the moment to make amends. Oh, he did too, because of course the uh, incident on the last lap between Kenetsov and Dyson. So yeah, Warboys was in a really good position there last week. Again, capitalised tonight. He's sitting on the podium, but knowing Blake, he won't be happy with third. He'll be uh, having his eyes on that second prize. He's trying to absolutely fly, and this is a crucial phase of the race then, trying to get it going. And if you can, if you possibly can, this is where you've got to have to try and find the move. On the brakes they go through the right then of this next section and can you get a run through because Kuznetsov is closing and the last thing you want to be doing if your Blake Warboys is attacking and defending at the same time this is the money lap if he wants to make the move yeah six to go this time round and uh, has allowed Kuznetsov to get onto the back of this little group so what was a battle for the podium between uh, Kelly Anshish and Warboys has quickly turned into a three-way battle and of course uh, Thomas Freeman sitting there in P5 if anything goes wrong in front he is there for an opportunity as well so we we'll jump on the camera now of car 07 a little bit further back in the field but all the action at the moment second third and fourth on screen with a six to go I'm not uh, not going to be the one to call this one could go either way at this point so I don't want to put the commentator's curse on anyone oh well, he's in the back of it he's in the back of it in the back of Michael Taliancic and suddenly Rick has then up will jump up to second just like that Taliancic defends it at turn seven one boys might try and slip down the inside and he will do he'll try and get it back they'll fight too wide at turn eight that never works and Kuznetsov holds around the outside oh my goodness Isabel's levels going through the roof here at SimSpeed TV, then rightly so, because the uh, action is a plenty on screen. With we have uh, got replays lined up for you here to just uh, see how that all unfolded again. The VRS replay, and it all started down here at turn number six, I think it was, as Warboys gets in the back of Taliancic under brakes. It's just a little bit too late, can't get it pitched, and just like that, into the wall goes Michael Taliancic. He holds on to it. They're still racing for that second position right now as they go through. And here's a secondary incident here. This is what happens to Delaney out then as he has a massive, massive moment. Locks it all up here, there and everywhere. And that ultimately ends his push then for a win against one Mr. Luke Crumb. But for second, it's still on right now. Tally Anchich with the widest, widest car in all of Chicago right now. Kuznetsov going to pivot away to the inside. No further safety cars from this point. We've hit the final five laps of the race. Here comes a search then to the inside from Rick Kuznetsov and it's elementary, my dear Watson. He will take that move. Here comes Blake Warboys. He's on the left-hand side. Now the right-hand side of your screen heading to turn seven. It's so tough to make a move on the outside of turn seven. Freeman's watching all of this with a bit of popcorn thinking, what can I do? Lap traffic, Troy Mortensen will get out of the way of everyone. What a scary place he was put in just then. Yeah, you can see Kinect off there on the lights, making sure that the uh, lap traffic in front knew exactly that the uh, train was coming through. Kelly Antris just running a little bit wide there on the exit again. That gives Blake Warboys an opportunity. And of course, Freeman on the inside gives an invitation as well. Decides to roll out of it. Probably a smart move at the moment because the three wide into the last corner is never going to work. But uh, make a way across oh, the line here. What about three here. into one? What about three into one? No. Just going to get out of it, then rolls out of the brakes. But Warboy's still on the outside. He's crucially got the inside for turn two. And that's the big money corner here as they go through. Can he get it around the outside? It's not fully secure, though. Taliach just doesn't have drive. And I think Blake Warboy's might have third here at the moment. The inside through the right is going to help, but how late on the brakes do you go? Tally Antic, you've got to be brave, Sunshine. And he's trying to go around the outside. Just enough room given. Incredible scenes here as they race for it. Warboys holds on to third. Yeah, we've seen how detrimental turn number four has been tonight. It's caught a lot of these quality drivers off guard and Tally Antic pushing his luck there, managing to come through the other side of it with some very skillful driving and uh, lots of uh, entertainment on screen at the moment. So he managed to keep it off the wall, has uh, cost himself a position, but this race is far from over. The one-armed bandit sitting in P4 at the moment. 
and uh, he has got his mirrors full with Freeman sitting there, car number one, looking for an opportunity as well. Tom Pritchard, who's in ninth place, will have a post-race drive-through penalty equivalent after the contact that he made with Ty Delaney. So that is a big uh, issue there for him. And the number four in trouble, his race over and done with. So Seb Vardell, I think, is uh, going to say, I'm going to get out of Dodge here and he's not going to finish this race. But you've still got Tali and he's trying to hold on that fourth position now. And it's just every place is going to feel like pulling teeth here. Tom has got to find a way through here. Thomas Freeman is hoping that he can get fourth place. And if he's quick about it, he might have a chance to get to Blake Warboys. He's got three laps, but Warboys, he's pretty much trying to get to the county border with Indiana. Yeah, it looks like he's put a bit of a gap there. And the real action now is for the final step of the podium between... Uh, oh, sorry, Tally and Freeman just off the podium. So Warboys there pulled about a 1.1 second gap so these boys here will have a little bit of a draft but while they're fighting side by side that's just going to give war boys the opportunity to pull away that little bit further again bit of car contact between the two of them nothing to write home about but uh, they are racing as close as they have all night i'll tell you what freeman's searching for it he absolutely wants it through the very tough turn eight and right up against the fences He'll try and maximise the circuit to try and get past the triple seven here of Michael Taliancic, who is putting the car in the right places to hold on to this fourth place. They drive out of turn 11 and up towards that final corner of turn number 12, knowing they've got a couple of popsicle sticks to go in this race. Just two laps then as Michael Taliancic holds on. And if he continues to hold on like this, Matt Stewart might not be out of the woods just yet to go through. There's your race leader, Andrew Dyson. You know he's eight seconds clear at the front of this field from that man, Triple Eight, Rick Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov can't do anything about him. No, Dyson's been the dominant tonight. We've almost forgotten about him while the rest of the battle packs uh, form behind. Super Sport, we have to talk about it. Luke Crumb's got a meatball. This is a massive moment in this race. He's in trouble. So currently sitting P90 is the uh, leading sports car out sports car out there at the moment. Two laps to go. I think you've actually got three laps to serve a meatball. So if he can bring it home without uh, too much more dramas, it's just a ma it's just a matter of whether or not uh, the cars behind him, Anderson and Hall Hallinan, are close enough to put any pressure on him. Well, crucially, if you can go four laps and bring that home. He's okay because he doesn't need to serve it because the race will end before he needs to serve it. He won't get a penalty for it after the race. So he's just got to limp it home. That's all he's got to do. Taliancic is in trouble. We note that as the white flag comes out, Michael Taliancic actually got spun by Thomas Freeman at turn six. So they've come together. Taliancic has been the wrong way around it. Freeman's got that place. He's your race leader though and he has been race leader for the majority of this race and deservedly so in terms of his pace here, Jason. He has been flawless. He has barely put a foot wrong. He's uh, read the strategy down to a T. He's putting good, consistent laps. He's got a clean car. The VRS replay shows us the Taliancic and Freeman incident there. Freeman having to look down the inside. It's going to be pretty... Whoa, just keep the foot into it. When in doubt, throttle out, says Taliancic as he spins the car back in the right direction. But uh, Freeman sitting in fourth at the moment. It is going to be a, a decision for the stewards after the race whether a penalty is applied, and that just might be enough to put the O4 back up into P4. That might be enough, as uh, Matt Stewart had just about everything to avoid it. But Andrew Dyson, what more can you say? He's on course then for his third race win of the season as he'll round himself for the final time in this race. He's passed the Fine Arts Building and the Auditorium. He now finds himself on South Michigan Avenue, flicking onto East Jackson Drive. South Columbus Drive will be his final straight moving forward. And what a drive by Andrew Dyson. He was never in doubt. What a major win. And it might be the win that pretty much cements him as head and shoulders above everyone else in the championship as he wins here at Chicago. Rick has nets off through everything at it, but it's strategy today that proved the difference. He'll take second, and Blake Warboys will come to the line in third position. A very, very good drive for his standard today. When it comes to number 30 and Luke Crumb, he is trying to limp this one home. He has got himself Troy Mortensen 
for a little bit of company, but it's Jack Anderson now who has found himself through, and Martin Hallinan is not. So Luke Crum is going to come to the line. We believe he's going to just about hold. We think he's held. That is a tough, tough way to bring that home in the final few laps of the black and orange mechanical flag looming, Jason. Yeah, absolutely stellar run from Crum tonight. That wasn't intentional, that little rhyme, but uh, finishing in P9. So amongst a very quality field of pro drivers out there tonight, Crum sneaking home with a uh, P9. Great points all for his championship campaign, and he will be ecstatic with uh, his efforts tonight. 58 laps around here. Certainly not an easy task, and uh, so not just a great effort from Dyson, but a really good effort from Crum to bring home the, uh, the sports class. Let's get up on screen then the unofficial classified results then here from the street of Chicago. But before we do, I think well, someone's very, very happy. They're going to get their Chicago doughies in. Look at that, Andrew Dyson. Every reason to be excited about that one. He drove the perfect tactical masterclass today. He had it on pace, he had it on strategy, and I'm pretty sure he could hide a few other things in his beard to showcase just how good he was here today around this street circuit, absolutely torching the tyres as he goes through and a deserved race victory at that as well for the Simrix.com DPR number 41 out there today let's then get ourselves our classified look or our unclassified look then at results here today do what you love and i'm sure all these drivers did some will love this circuit others won't andrew dyson though the mustang was unflappable an hour 38 minutes and 34 seconds wins by 6.9 in the end over rick kuznetsov who threw everything at it to get back through the field but just ran out of time and running a little bit too far away was number 41. Blake Warboys would finish off in third ahead of Thomas Freeman, but he is pending that fourth place finish. Depending on what the stewards look at between his incident, along with Michael Taliancic on the penultimate lap of the race, which promoted a number of drivers up, including Matt Stewart and Jack Mickelson. Matt Stewart was up as high as second position in this race. He got into it with Seb Varndell. That's why he dropped down the order. Michael Taliancic will finish seventh in the triple seven car with Tom Pritchard, or Pritchard in eighth position uh, right now. So he's got himself then a post-race drive-through penalty. So he is going to drop down the order. No doubts though about Luke Crumb. He will finish as your super uh, race winner right now in your super sport category. The number 30, they're getting it done. 41 seconds off your leader with Jack Anderson rounding out then. 10 in the field over the page then to 11th and there weren't many finishes on the leading lap today just the 13 with martin Hallen and ty delaney and Colin finland uh, then finding themselves 11th 12th and 13th with troy mortensen and aiden ford a lap down the amount of work that aiden ford had to do to get to the finish one lap down was incredible you then had Seb Varndell pull the car off with three laps to go. Shane Nowens have himself the most battered and bruised car he finds to finish three laps down. And then the retirees, David Coleman, Jai Schultz and Seth Brown. Jai Schultz with a big incident, of course, getting caught up in the multi-car uh, pileups that were there. Teo Sorono ended up upside down. Thomas Hins and Andy Barber both got caught out in the big one. So too did Jamie Dyke, Brandon Grosch. We saw him turned around and get caught in all sorts of trouble with a mechanical failure or a technical failure, as it were. And then Tim Mulford, unable to find the race finish, along with Aiden Schultz on the opening lap of the race. Well, that brings then all of the racing to a close, but it doesn't stop with us because we do have drivers here sitting, waiting and ready to go. First and foremost, we're going to bring Andrew Dyson into the conversation race winner here today and Andrew you had to look at that as one which you had the pace the strategy you had the clean the cleanliness around the track you had a little bit of fortune as well and just everything came up trumps today in a race which you absolutely dominated yeah definitely man the biggest thing around that track we we're just talking about just then actually is the clear air man you, you can see where you're going you can see all the walls and that that's a that's the biggest thing with this track you really need to have the clear air and not be obscured by the car in front and that gives you the best chance of keeping it clean and going as fast as you can you kept it going you got it as fast as you can 
talk us through the moment then you come in for your pit stop and you realize that Rick behind you has decided to stay out a little bit longer. Was there that little sense of doubt that if, if this does go the way that maybe Rick's thinking that we're just going to get a safety car and then a safety car and then another one that that he might be in position or were you looking at that going, well, he's going to need a safety car first and foremost and then he's going to need some absolute help to get back into place? Um... Eventually, I worked out, yeah, he's going to need like a safety car or something else to help him help him get back up. But when we first went into the pits, um, I was looking at the relative to see who was behind me and how far back you know, he was, how close he was. Um, I didn't see his name. I saw Blake. And I was like, oh, my heart skipped a beat for a second. Like, have I done something wrong? But yeah, it all worked out in the end. Well, it's your third race win of the season. You find yourself then moving even further in front with Vandell's retirement here today. You sit pretty much in a position right now where you've got two race victories in the back pocket and you head to Rudskogen in a week's time for a 150, knowing that with two races in the back pocket, are you looking at this as just, I'm going to try and find six finishes and that's my title? Uh, no, I want to come out and have some good races with people. I, I mean, I want to keep it clean and stay on the track, but if I can get up here and, and keep, uh, you know, John what I can do, and I'll definitely have a go at it for sure. Well, you'll have a go at it, but before we let you go here, Andrew, shout out sponsor two gets it done. A victory here from the windy city of Chicago. Yeah, uh, thanks to you guys for putting on the broadcast. All the guys at um, at the league, DSL Welding Services, Kobe at Inside Lane, uh, for sponsoring the league as well. Uh, quick shout out to our sponsors, uh, Simix.com, South Ellison Hoyts, Femex Mechanical, Phoenix Smokers, and Peter Zorns for the sick paint jobs. He's been working hard lately on that new Porsche, so thanks, man. And um, yeah, shout out to Dill for the wicked setup, man. Love your work, brother. Well, there you have it. Andrew Dyson, your race victor overall, proving with absolute certainty that he had the most wonderful drive. Jason Fewens has been wandering down, looking for someone to have a chat with, and he's run into Rick Kuznetsov, who finished second today. Yeah, absolutely uh, wild 58 laps there, Rick, and that uh, you were had your hands full for pretty well most of them. The Triple Eight uh, Commodore tonight, bringing home a second place. Probably a little bit disappointed that you weren't right on the back of Dyson and towards the end of the race, but uh, you certainly put on a show and uh, a good points all nonetheless. Yeah, my strategy call wasn't the smartest. Um, I was, had something planned, but uh, it clearly didn't work out. So it was just a catch-up game after the, the second last safety car. Um, and the last safety car helped me heaps, so I was just trying to get back to P2 and I was happy with that. Yeah, well, to be honest, we did speak about it during the race and you did an absolutely stellar job to keep Dyson behind on fresh rubber once the safety car disappeared. Um, but it was always going to make a, uh, an interesting race and you were going to have your hands full. And then, of course, you did have to pit under green and drop right back down through the order. A safety car brought you back into it and uh, managed in the last, I think, 10 or 11 laps there to make up a handful of positions. Some of them through a little bit of luck and some of them through uh, some really good driving. So... Despite uh, not taking the win tonight, second place is certainly nothing to sneeze at. 58 laps round here has been a, a heck of a, an effort, and I'm sure you'll take a big, deep breath and recoup and uh, have a look and rethink about how things could have played out um, after uh, such an eventful race. Yeah, definitely. To survive this track uh, is a main goal. Um, it was a good race at Dyson throughout the race, so yeah, it was good fun. So something Dyson did touch on during his little interview a moment ago was just the, the clarity and the importance of having some clean track in front of you so you could see those apexes and uh, while you're tucked underneath the re rear wing of his uh, his Mustang there I think you did a really good job you put lots of pressure on and uh, tried to make make a mistake happen in front but it just didn't uh, cars didn't fall that way tonight but uh, second place good points haul and uh, I'm sure you'll be uh, pretty keen to go into next week's round and uh, apply some more pressure and put on a good show for us. Yeah, 100%. Uh, staying close around here is pretty difficult. Uh, it's a bit of error wash as well. Uh, the track's narrow, so uh, yeah, I was happy to stay as close as I can. Yeah, very unforgiving. And of course, we're off next week um, to a circuit that's got a lot more runoff. Um, the critical uh, circumstances of uh, any contact out there probably won't be as superficial next week. But uh, I'll let you throw over and have a quick word and shout out to all your sponsors that uh, allow you to go racing each week. Yeah, big shout out to 95 Sim Sport uh, for the support. Uh, Race Cross Simulations, RV Media. Uh, i got to remember this. One sec. Uh, I think it's... 
F U Suicide, and yeah, that's I'm pretty sure. Oh, R S W Graphics. Yeah, great, uh, great support there across the board from your uh, your team sponsors there tonight. You put on a good show. They got plenty of coverage on the Sim Speed broadcast tonight around the streets of Chicago here. So, not the result you were probably hoping for, but a great result nonetheless, mate. We really look forward to seeing you back next week and uh, see what you can do. You put on last couple of weeks of a really good effort and uh, been contender right up until the the, the last section of the race. So. Uh, a wind's knocking on the door, no doubt. It's just a matter of being there at the right place at the right time. Yeah, 100%. Cheers, guys, for broadcast. Have a good night. All right, second place tonight, Rick Knestoff there. He's uh, calling it quits. He's going to put his car back in the transport, a reset, go back and regroup, and he'll be back next week to put on a, uh, a show for everybody here tonight. But we have Sperry again. I think he may have our third place getter tonight on screen at the moment. Car number 63 in the uh, WKMP Super Chief a Mustang. This will be Blake Warboys. Certainly will. Blake, let's talk about just how difficult it is to hold an overtake around this circuit. It looks, especially in the final stage of the race, you and Michael, that you definitely had pace. You definitely had the ability to go out and make overtakes. But... The moment you just blink in the wrong direction, it, it can so very easily turn a little bit sour, and then it looked like the entire world was uh, descending on your battle there for a little bit. Yeah, the um, battle was definitely intense for the last few laps there. Um, I'm going to say sorry to Mike for the, the bump that I gave him in one of the corners there, but uh, luckily not too much damage and he was able to continue on. But yeah, um, very hard to make a clean pass around this track um, but that's the same with every street circuit there's always a bit of bumping and grinding and then it brings the cars behind you into the fight as well so it makes for some great entertainment it really does and for you today it was a case where the top two maybe had better pace today but you certainly had that consistency throughout the entirety of the runs now, talk us through the middle stop because it seemed very important that some drivers took a little bit more in the stop than others. Others took maybe a little bit shorter of service banking on uh, maybe a couple of cautions. And that shuffled you back down the order to about sixth or seventh position. So what's the difference for you when you go out driving, for example, when you're out there in third position in the race compared to when you're back in sixth and seventh, you've got to make a couple of places? Yeah, well... Um... During that race, the middle stint, I was trying to save a little bit of fuel. Um, just thinking there could be a safety car at any minute. And if there is, we might be able to make it to the end. So I was trying to save a little bit of fuel. Um, obviously, a couple might have done a bit better job than I did. Um, so I was a bit really a bit surprised to see uh, Coleman and another car actually jump us in the pits. It was quite a bit of a surprise, but they had some great pace as well. Um, but yeah, while you're up the front and with the front, front guys, you're sort of trying to push, but where you can, you also try and just lift and coast a tiny bit just to save that little bit to see if you can get a jump on any of your competitors. Let's talk next week. Let's talk Rudskogen. We're heading to Norway, a uh, brand new track to the IRAC service as of four months ago. Uh, what do you think of the place? Because it's a very, very interestingly different circuit to this one here at Chicago. It's got a lot more heavier undulation changes and as a circuit, pretty much goes under the radar. Not many people have heard of it, but it's a very great drive. Yeah, well, personally, I haven't driven it and I probably haven't even bought the track yet, so um, well, I'll try to endeavor. Good news for you is it's free. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, very good. Um, but, oh, yeah, yeah, it is too. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll endeavour to do as much practice as I can during the week. I didn't get basically any practice this week for Chicago, so I came in with about half an hour run. So to, to get a P3 for me is incredible. Um, but, yeah, I'll definitely be putting in the hours this week just to try and get a better grasp and try and close that gap to the front too. Well, the floor is yours here. Blake, shout out sponsors. Who gets it done for you? Uh, to the team, WKMP Sim Sports, uh, Wodonga Carts and Carts, LGK Carts Australia, EKS Carts Australia, and Super Cheap Auto for all their great support and everyone that's been supporting me in the background with the sim racing. Um, my fiance, who lets me be on the sim a lot more than what I probably should, but 
uh, thanks to her and uh, yeah the broadcast was probably another great broadcast i'm looking forward to watching it back sorry it's all that blake wall boys have to thank the fiance always thank the fiance uh getting it done and sorted in third position overall having a really really good drive here today final driver then jason as you've uh, wandered all the way down to the paddock over to the super sport uh, drivers, you found your race winner overall in that category in the form of Luke Crumb. Yeah, pilot of the LCR Mustang tonight, starting 24th on the grid and finishing inside the top 10. Of course, being the top super sport finisher tonight is why he's with us. Congratulations, Luke. Car number 30 tonight. I'm sure we're an hour and a half ago when the lights went green. If someone told you we were going to finish inside the top 10, you would have uh, taken that with a, uh, a grain of salt to see how things panned out, but it's exactly how how things uh, showed up as a flag drop tonight yeah thanks jason yeah um yeah i i definitely didn't expect it or i knew it was going to be a uh, race of survival but um yeah it was uh i would have definitely not thought i would have finished in the top 10 so i'm pretty uh, stoked with that so a very distinctive car we did see you manage to sneak through a big incident that happened between turns four and five there at one point so a little bit of luck fell your way. You just managed to find a bit of a gap in the uh, traffic there and managed to avoid what was a, quite a bit of carnage. And uh, from there on, it really didn't look like you were too uh, too challenged. You had things under control. A couple of safety cars towards the end of the race put you in a pretty good position for the uh, run home. Yeah, that uh, that that incident turn five there got pretty uh, pretty scary. I come around the corner and. I think uh, I think I bottomed out the brake pedal to be honest, and uh, luckily I was able to sneak through there and get around them cars. But um, yeah, believe it or not, tonight I think I only made one actual like uh, pass for position uh, uh, in anger. Like I think every other pass is either from crashes or uh, positions made during safety car. So I really just ran my own race and just uh, you know bit a bit of luck and you know trying to stay out of trouble just sort of got me up as far as I did. Well, it's definitely a strategy that's worked. It's uh, very important, obviously, to keep a clean car around here because the the walls come up on you pretty quick and a little bit of damage and the steering damage can end your night um, prematurely. So congratulations, 58 laps around here is uh, no small effort. So to do it uh, by making up so many positions in the, in the meantime, whether it be keeping a cool, calm head or uh, making a pass under race conditions, it's, uh, it's certainly nothing to be sneezed at. So big effort tonight. Of course, that's going to help your championship campaign we are halfway through the season and uh, as we go into the second half put yourself in a pretty good position as we uh, look forward yeah yeah um uh yeah it, it really does help with the championship I, I, i've missed a few rounds this season but um i didn't realize until tonight i'm actually on a 100 percent win rate for the uh for our uh, our, uh, our class so uh, every race i've turned up here so far i've won so i'm pretty happy with that so are we going to see you next week and try and keep that tradition going? Yeah, mate, for sure. <laughs> so uh, while you've got a bit of form under your belt, uh, we're off next week to, uh, to Norway, as we've already discussed. Completely different circuit to how we found, a th found ourselves here tonight. And uh, quite a tight, twisty little circuit with a little bit of runoff there. So uh, there'll be room for error, but uh, obviously you've got to keep your eye on the prize. And uh, that being the, uh, the championship for the uh, Super Sport in another six weeks time do you want to do a quick shout out to any of your teammates or any of your sponsors before we go this evening to uh, give them a bit of coverage yeah guys uh yeah just really big thanks to all the team at lcr and uh the guys at inside lane productions and on track ag and um all our little uh, sponsors and partners thanks everyone and yeah thanks for putting on the broadcast and thanks for the league and all the organizers no, well, we get to sit back and watch all the action unfold and it's the, uh, the drivers out there week in, week out that have got the pressure on them and it's not an easy task to do. So it's absolutely splendid effort tonight, mate. I'm sure you'll walk away, take a big, big sigh after uh, 58 laps around Chicago and uh, we look forward to seeing you again next week for another 150km race. Thanks, guys. I'll, I'll try and keep the uh, show, uh, show entertaining, please. All right, Luke Crumb there, finishing P9 tonight uh, around the streets of Chicago. As on your screen, round number seven, Rudskogen Motor Centre uh, is round number seven. Hopefully we'll see a large field again there next week, uh, Sperry. We've lost a few tonight through, through circumstance, but uh, next round we're looking for a big field again. 
I'm sure that Rud Skogen will prove to be one of those incredible circuits of racing. It is so unique in terms of the way you go through, especially the middle sector. If you haven't had the chance to drive it already on iRacing, it's free. If you join right now, it's free. You can race it. It's incredible. So make sure you get yourself in on any machinery that you possibly can. But you're going to see it on the 27th of January at 8.15 p.m. Australian Eastern DST. Make sure you jump in on that and join us at Sims TV, as well as watch some of the other shows that we got going on. Of course, you got the Majors Atlantic region, which is, uh, sorry, no, the Majors Pacific region, which is absolutely fantastic. So make sure that you check that out and get yourself in on the mix for on the top of that. But I have to give a massive thanks to the three that are there. DSL Welding Services, Inside Lane Productions, and SVR Images. Of course, the replays today have been brought to you by the Virtual Racing School from Jay Kennedy on the cameras. Jason Fewers has been alongside me. My name has been Jake Sperry. Well, halfway, we has just cemented itself down and there is one driver's name that is up uh, head and shoulders above everything else. He's hoovering up this championship. The name is Dyson. We'll see you in Rudskogen, Norway, one week from today. Available now. Download your copy today.